best record in baseball, the Los Angeles Dodgers division rivals. And finally, the last division series to launch. Hi, everybody. Brian Anderson, Joe Simpson, the Hall of Famer, Dennis Eckersley. We'll hear from Lauren Shahadi in just a moment. What a scene here. They are so anxious to get ready uh, for this series. Heck, and the Los Angeles Dodgers. By the way, this is not a late arriving crowd. They are all here early, ready to go. But the Dodgers, 104 wins this year. They feel like they have all the pressure on them. This World Series are bust, and they've got their ace on the mound in Kershaw tonight, Eck, who might be sitting by you in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, soon. you're probably right. He's done everything in this game, you know, what he's done. Three Cy Youngs and MVP. He's the best pitcher in his generation. The greatest. You're talking about him, Sandy Kopax. you got to put him with Sandy Kopax. You know, he's thrown a no-hitter. He's an MVP. He missed a lot of time this season, still won 18 games. This guy is the man. The pressure is on him. The only thing he's never done is win a world championship. He's got to have it. Looking for his first playoff win at Dodger Stadium. All right, Joe, with the Dodgers as dominant as they were throughout the regular season, one of their Achilles heels was the Arizona Diamondbacks. Somehow they solved the riddle of the Dodgers this year. Yeah, the, uh, the Diamondbacks won 93 games. They also won the season series against the Dodgers and went 26 and 12 down the stretch. You got a sampling of what they could do in the wild card game. They can hit, they can pitch, they can run. One thing they are not is intimidated by the Dodgers. They won the last six meetings of the year, including outscoring the Dodgers 19 to 2 here at Chavez Ravine in early September and sweeping a series here. Riding a wave of confidence after the wild card when Taiwan Walker from Southern California will get the ball for the Diamondbacks. Pull up a chair here at Dodger Stadium. It's the Dodgers and the D-backs. It's time to play ball. Clayton Kershaw has hit the field and before we get to first pitch let's check in with the fourth member of our team making her Turner sports debut welcome to the family Lauren from the best seat in the house yeah VA I'm pretty lucky I keep asking all these Dodgers what makes Clayton Kershaw so special so good every single one of them say the exact same thing he works harder than anybody else and it all comes down to his routine are you ready for it Brian because it's pretty intense Brandon McDaniels the strength coach he told me 40 seven minutes prior to first pitch he sprints to the field slams his fist against the center field wall 13 minutes after that Brandon stretches him and then Kershaw runs four sprints on the foul line I just saw Cody Bellinger I asked him if anyone talks to Kershaw on game days he looked at me BA like I was crazy he said no way he is the nicest guy you're ever going to want to meet but on game days he turns into the incredible Hulk great person great humanitarian 
totally different ball game when he starts and he's got the ball and a big one today for the Dodgers to start there in LDS. This is the batting order he will face. David Peralta, A.J. Pollock, Paul Goldschmidt, an MVP candidate. Middle goes Martinez, Brandon Drury, and Adam Rosales. Cattell Marte, Jeff Mathis gets the call behind the plate. No Chris Iannetta. And Taiwan Walker will get the ball for the Arizona Diamondbacks. Bobby Ray had to pitch in a wild card game, so it is the right-hander Walker to match up against Clayton Kershaw, Eck, one of the best in our generation here. Without a doubt, that guy is the man beyond intense. I mean, it's incredible what he's done. He missed about a month, still won 18 games this year. Only thing missing is the World Series for this guy's career. First pitch, a swing and a miss, and away we go at raucous Dodger Stadium. A reputation of a late arriving crowd, but even though many are still filing their way in, this is a very good representation right out of the gates here in the first inning. You see the year for Clayton Kershaw. He's got a chance to win his fifth Cy Young Award. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm feeling it. This crowd is getting it. I'll tell you what, I'm watching him as tense as he is, I'm going to see how he goes about it. You know, he's he's faced them a couple times and beaten them, but Velocity is not the same. Fastball, slider, curveballs, no changeups really. 0-2 pitch. Peralta takes it away. Some lineups to discuss here today, Joe Simpson. As far as the Arizona Diamondbacks are concerned, they've done some mixing and matching, trying to find the right combination for Kershaw. Kershaw has faced him twice this year, but nothing since the Fourth of July. Well, he hasn't given up anything to him, Brian. Only one earned run in 15 and a third innings. And hitters just six for 51 against him. So they got to find a different combination. They put Adam Rosales at third base. Lamb is out of the lineup tonight. That's one change. So they're just trying to mix and match a little better than what they did earlier this year. Well, it is interesting that the Diamondbacks have Jeff Mathis back there catching Taiwan Walker. We'll get into that matchup a little bit later, but they lose one of their better bats in Chris Iannetta, one of their better bats against Clayton Kershaw, even. Kershaw deals a 2-2. And a swing and a foul out of play by Peralta. Arizona coming into this division series on a roll. Tori Lovello, the Southern California kid. He's a Valley boy, self-proclaimed. Grew up in Santa Monica. And the son of a famous television producer, Sam. And very familiar with Dodger Stadium. Came to a bunch of games throughout his childhood. He said about, on average, 20, 25 a year. And he recognized this is going to be a very special moment for him to manage a postseason game here at Dodger Stadium. And he knows that left-handed hitters have not done anything against Kershaw since the All-Star break. Left-handed hitters are just three for 28 against him. Peralta battling and draws the walk. Kershaw got him down 0-2, and Peralta is on. Good start for the Diamondbacks. How about defensively for the Dodgers there, Joe? It's a good group, and in terms of if you're into the sabermetrics, defensive run save, they led the National League, and especially Yasiel Puig, who was number one in right field with 18 defensive runs saved. It's a good group. Forsyth is playing second base instead of Utley, just for defensive purposes. A man on to start it against Kershaw. Here is A.J. Pollock. It's always discussion about who will hit second in this Arizona batting order, and it is Pollock here tonight, and he lets it loose right away against Kershaw. Starters beware in this postseason, right? So far, the starters in the first six games of the postseason, this is prior to the Hendrick Strasburg matchup tonight. 44 innings, an 8 1 8 ERA. All these managers, pitching coaches, players watching these games unfold through the wild card day, Tuesday and Wednesday, and then the first wave of games yesterday and today. And it is tough sledding right now to get that call on the mound. Very few are having success. And speaking of lack of success, not too many teams can run on Kershaw. He's very good at holding runners. However, the Diamondbacks, I mentioned they could run. Well, they were fourth in the league in stolen bases, and I expect them to take some chances against Kershaw tonight just to try to create some offense. There have only been five attempts off of Kershaw to steal, and it says everything. Let's see what he got here. Back-to-back -back hitters. Kershaw goes 0-2. Peralta walks. 
And the 0-2 to Pollock. Good swing, fouls it back. Now he misses badly, I think. 0-2 gave him too much to hit there. You know, the thing about Kershaw is he's got that nasty slider that all right hand hitters are, you know, looking for. The ball inside. He's got that arm side fastball anytime he wants it. If he dots that outside corner, he made a mistake there. But we'll see him go to that. Short lead for Peralta. And Kershaw deals to Pollock into center field. That's hit pretty well, but right there he is Taylor. And the first out for Clayton Kershaw. Had him off balance and one away. You're not going to see a lot of curveballs. You know, it's mostly fastball slider, but I think that was a curveball right there. Got him out front. Now Kershaw looking for his first win at Dodger Stadium in the postseason 0 and 3 record in the postseason at home a 5-7 ERA and this will be one of the great matchups of the day Cy Young Award candidate in Kershaw and an MVP candidate in Paul Goldschmidt. Goldschmidt coming off a monster year just came under the 300 mark for batting average but he at 36 homers he drove at 120 and that was all with a relatively poor September by Goldschmidt standards. Finished the season 0 for his last 17 but yet put the Diamondbacks on his back in the wild card game on Wednesday as Kershaw deals him a strike at 95 miles an hour. The count is even. Nice firm fastball 95. You're not going to see much more than that. That's enough. He's fired up. He never walks anybody. To walk a leadoff guy is, is almost unbelievable. And a strike. One and two to count. One of the things that makes it hard to run on Kershaw is that slide step. He has a very quick stride, quick release, no high leg kick generally out of the stretch. He's going forward as soon as he starts. I mean, he's gone. So Dave Roberts, reigning manager of the year, might have the manager of the year in 2017 in the other dugout tonight at Tory Lavello. Goldschmidt able to lay off. Two and two the count. A couple of UCLA Bruins matching up against one another. Tory Lavello and Dave Roberts. Third base coach is Tony Paris Chica. Going through the signs with AJ, or rather Paul Goldschmidt. And Peralta has not shown he is interested in running at this point, especially with the power at the plate of a Paul Goldschmidt. Launched to Homer in his first at bat in the wild card game. There's a call, strike three. Kershaw burns off the edge. Out number two and strikeout number one. How about this? Your center cut. Fastball, what's he looking for? Not that. And that's where his power is. He likes the ball out away from him. Guessed wrong. Don't tell me you don't guess. You got to guess. <laughs> and so it'll be J.D. Martinez now. One of the great ads in the middle of the season changing the Diamondbacks especially against left handed pitching totally put their lineup in place with Goldschmidt and Martinez becoming one of the great tandems in all of baseball. Never seen anything like it. Twenty nine home runs in sixty two games. Incredible. Including four in one game in this ballpark. Coming from the Tigers to the Diamondbacks Kershaw pounds him inside for a strike. That's Kershaw's nature. Be curious to see the game plan tonight but he has always been a pitcher that will pound it get you inside conscious. I wonder if he tried to go back door a little bit more this game we'll find out. No balls in a strike. Peralta drew the lead off walk. And a little half swing he goes. Paul Nauert, the home plate umpire, raises the thumb, and the count is 0-2, and, and they're on their feet already at Dodger yeah, Stadium. That's what I'm talking about. I'll tell you, there's one thing you can't teach, and that's a deception that Kershaw has. It's, it just, it's so funky. A 
And a liner down the left field line. That's going to hook foul. Kershaw had him out in front. Martinez able to stay alive. This guy's scary to a ball downstairs. I thought that ball was a double down the line. He's got great plate coverage. Even 0 and 2 there, middle away. You're just in time. Those who stuck with Cubs Nationals back on TBS. Kershaw with two outs. He misses low to J.D. Martinez. We welcome you. The Chicago Cubs prevail in game one of the NLDS. And Tori Lovello and the Arizona Diamondbacks, the wild card winners, matching up against the Dodgers. The last division series to begin. Kershaw with a runner at first. Two away. And the one two Martinez takes a ball inside the wow. by much. Well I'll tell you this ball's inside but if I'm pitching I, I'm thinking I made my pitch but it's not even close. Rondal was set up in there so it looked a little better than it was. But Martinez great plate coverage even though he stands off the plate he's inviting you to pitch him away and he likes the ball away. 2 2 pitch. And he got him. The slider. Just underway, the Diamondbacks fail to score off Clayton Kershaw as we bring him inside the booth, presented by Vizio back on TBS after the Cubs and the Nationals. Brian Anderson with Joe Simpson and the Hall of Famer Dennis Eckersley. And Joe, first inning's always big. When you start a series, Clayton Kershaw held serve. He's been there, done that, though. He can handle the adrenaline rush that everybody gets. We're not sure that everybody will be able to do that. We'll be watching here in the bottom of the first. Giant question mark for Taiwan Walker, Eck, who gets the ball here today. He's been terrific what? for the Arizona Diamondbacks this season, but he's from Southern California, knows Dodger Stadium. Biggest start of his life tonight. Talk about giant, man. This guy is huge. He reminds you of Aaron Judge from the mound. Same number, right? <laughs> Look at him. 
Kind of an up and down guy. High fastballs and split fingers. You see the high fastball right there. Gets uh, two thirds of his strikeouts with that high fastball. But you know, I'm nervous for this kid. You just don't know what you're going to get. You got Kershaw against really the number four starter for the Diamondbacks. Walker facing Chris Taylor has locked down not only the leadoff spot for the Dodgers but also the center field position that had been a revolving door for Los Angeles most of the year as much a revolving door and question marks as you can have for a team that won 104 games this season a fantastic season but they do have some platoons Joe and They've had some question marks throughout the season positionally. Well they've had a lot of injuries. They've had so many guys on the disabled list. In fact they use the DL more than anybody in baseball. But this guy Walker I mean, we talked about Kershaw being good at home. This guy's been good here. Yeah good on the road. I mean that says something good here in Dodger Stadium two times beat him. But you can see he can have some control issues upstairs. That slider can be an issue. It's all about command for him tonight. Totally. There's that split. Controlling his emotions as much as controlling his pitches. Walker, the only visiting starting pitcher to win twice at Dodger Stadium this season. Taylor at 288. Hitter hammers one into the gap left center, and that's going to get down. Looked like Pollock didn't see it off the bat. And Chris Taylor starts it with a base hit. And you've met Taylor. Let's give you the rest of the Los Angeles Dodgers for We're game one the of this club. NLDS. Seeger, reigning rookie of the year, hits second. Justin Turner almost won a batting title this year, finished third. He bats third. And then you got Bellinger, Yasiel Puig, and Curtis Granderson. Yasmani Grandal gets a call behind the plate. Logan Forsythe instead of Utley at second base with Kershaw on the mound. Lead man on. Here is Corey Seager. Well, I thought Taylor crushed that ball when he first hit it. That ball was in the air a long time. Dropped in front of Pollock. Maybe he didn't see it all that well. I don't think he could have got it anyway. Taylor's been a great add on to this ball club, a great pickup from the Mariners, and a real catalyst at the top of their order. It's fun to watch. And Seager. A little bit late, fouls it away. Walker takes a while to deliver it now, too. You got Taylor over there, 17 bags he's gotten this year. Yeah. Sager swinging so hard, and, and you think he swings a hard. Wait till Bellinger gets up here. This is a great matchup, though. It's a high fastball pitcher against a high fastball hitter. Check on the runner at first. It's interesting that Taiwan Walker is a pitcher who pitches with the inside fastball like the high fastball the inside heater and yet when he gets a lot of swings and misses with that he comes back with a lot of ground balls as well that split change that Eck referenced he can go into many quadrants this pitcher and that one oh. down and in. Well it's tough to get the ball down look at look at he's a monster out there he's got a Got to finish. Every time you try to hump up a little bit, that's bound to be belt high. That's why that splitter's so good for him. 6'4, 235. I think he's bigger than that. Yeah, he looks 6'8. Maybe it's the socks. <laughs> so you're going to be able to lay off. Walker looks like he's back with the change. He looks like he slows down to throw that thing, that little split. Justin Turner do next. Powerhouse Dodger offense. They can go with the best of them. They hit a bunch of home runs. Seeger with 22 on the season. And Seeger sends that one foul. Seeger with 159 hits this year. He led all National League shortstops. That was with a poor September as well. He got it going right at the end of the season. But Seeger has proven himself to be one of the elites at the position, the reigning rookie of the year. And it looks like the Dodgers are going to have back to back rookies of the year with Cody Bellinger this season. Start this runner here, Joe. Yes. Yes. Got this guy who can make contact. I know they've got several guys in their order with over 120 strikeouts this year, but I trust Seeger to put it in play. 
Taylor takes off and it's up and away. Ball four. First two have reached. Nobody out. How about Arizona defensively, Joe? Well, there were 13 out of 15 teams in the National League defensively in defensive percentage. They made 108 errors, but you got a gold glove at first. You got a gold glove in center. They're pretty solid up the middle. The guy I would kind of worry about is Mathis. He's coming back from the DL after suffering a broken hand. I don't know how well he can throw with that right hand. But one of the reasons Tori Lavella wants Mathis on the field is what you just saw right there. A quick meeting at the mound. Mathis, a calm soothing personality for a high energy pitcher in oh, Taiwan Walker. You need it now. And man. he's trying. He is trying to settle down the big right hander. First two have reached and now Justin Turner is coming up. What a year for him again. 322 batting average finished third in the National League and hitting this season. Charlie Blackman Daniel Murphy finished ahead of him. Dodgers putting up a big threat early. This is a game the Dodgers need to win. They've got their ace going against arguably the number three or four starter for the Diamondbacks. Advantage Dodgers. They really have to win this game. And Turner oh. lets it fly oh. on the first offering. <laughs> oh. Trying to hit one into the pavilion up there, and Turner is down 0 and 1. So he can have trouble with that slider, I tell you. That ball is just spinning up out over the zone. And I tell you, he puts a swing on this, reaching for it a little bit, but still, hanger. First pitch. You talk about the game speeding up on you right away, first <laughs> inning, and you've never been in the playoffs? Are right. you kidding me? Tough spot. Well, the Diamondbacks had to use Robbie Ray in the wild card game. He was set to pitch game one. Instead, Ray. We'll pitch game two as Walker fires one in and Turner with a good hack fouls it away, but he is aggressive. I'll tell you what, he's been throwing. I know it doesn't mean anything, but runners in scoring position off of Walker, four for their last 43. So that's he's been pitching the last couple, you know, 40 innings this year, he's been dynamite. But it's the playoffs. And this guy at the plate, you mentioned the good year, Brian. He had the highest batting average with two strikes on him. In the majors, 279. Dodgers, as a club, as an offense, very good, not swinging out of the strike zone. If you're Taiwan Walker right now, Turner's bounced into 11 double plays during the regular season, and he is desperate for one right here. See what he has done this year with the bases empty. He's gotten better when runners have gotten on, and especially when runners are in scoring position. Lead you to believe he's more focused. Walker deals it and Turner lays off a tough change. Yeah, they must pick that up, man. That's takes a lot off of that split. I'll tell you what, that's the difference in the playoffs. Hitters just don't give up, give up at bats, man. They just eyeball everything. Mike Butcher, terrific pitching coach, former Angels pitching coach now. Manning the ship here in Arizona keeping a close eye on his young right hander. Well the Dodgers don't as you said Brian they don't chase a lot as a result second in the National League and pitches per at bat. And that's even taken in consideration that Corey Seager wants to hit every first pitch he sees. So they make you work. Lowest swing and a miss by a team out of the zone. Oh. That's deep. That is well hit. Turner will watch it fly. Three nothing. Hello. Justin, 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 Justin. I'll tell you what, he spits on the split finger to pitch before, then he gets a fastball down and in, and he loses it. Drops the head and drives it. As soon as he hit it, you knew the ball was gone. Remember, he was a little late on that hanger mm -hmm. earlier in the at bat. He wasn't late on that one. He was on time and got it out front. Three up, three in.
Three nothing Dodgers. The kid from Cal State Fullerton, his third career postseason home run. Justin Turner lights the fuse here at Dodger Stadium and giving their ace a three nothing lead early. And now Cody Bellinger. All eyes on Walker right now to see if he can turn this boat around. Man, the energy is through the roof. First inning. Woo. Worst case scenario for Tori Lavello. Big swing by Bellinger. Bellinger likely the rookie of the year. Can't imagine a scenario where he wouldn't win that award. Set a National League record this year for home runs by a rookie. And Turner has set the stage for him for a, let's call it a less than fully pressurized at bat here after a three run blast. Boy, this could get ugly. It already is ugly. Sometimes it's not just a command issue where you're walking guys it's a command issue in the zone. He's afraid to go back in that zone. I've never seen anybody swing so hard in my life. <laughs> in your life. Well there's a lot of them but when you see it right here. Been watching video of this guy all year long going bridge every night. High popping power. And he rolls over that one, and that's through. And he left the middle wide open. A bit of a shift on for Bellinger. Three hits and a walk to start this one for the Dodgers offensively. And Tori Lavella was putting the plan in place with his pitching coach right now. By the way, home runs mean more this postseason as T-Mobile guaranteeing at least one million dollars for hurricane recovery efforts with every home run hit worth ten thousand dollars. Help break one million by tweeting hashtag HR for HR and T-Mobile will donate an additional dollar one dollar per tweet. We've seen a lot of them in this postseason already and Turner is on the board with his first after hitting 21 during the regular season. Here is Yasiel Puig with a man on. Nobody out still. Bottom of the first. One other thing on Walker is that he didn't give up a ton of homers. He only gave up 17 on the year. And he had not given up one on the road in his last five starts. He gets another guy on. Somebody's got to get up. There's nobody warming up right now. He's 25 years old. But his first postseason start, a former first round pick by the Mariners. Last start was against the Royals in Kansas City, went five innings, a tune up start. He struck out six. That was last Saturday. Last year with the Mariners, eight and 11, had a 4 2 2 ERA, pitched a good part of the year with bone spurs in his ankle that he had removed in the offseason had surgery and has bounced back with a terrific season in his first year with Arizona part of the Gene Segura deal with the Mariners as he comes up and in on Yasiel Puig two balls and a strike. You see this high fastball gets away from him a little bit. A little run to it, but not even close to a strike. Ooh. Surprised it didn't hit him in the hand. Went right by the knuckles, didn't it? Pui gets a spot fifth in the order as the runner takes off and a swing and a foul. Pui got a big hack. Bellinger was on the move. A couple of first basemen in this series that can run. Bellinger had 10 stolen bases on the year, and Goldschmidt had 18. Are many center field first base combination no. players in the major league? <laughs> no. Dodger is one of them. Chris Woodward, third base coach of the Dodgers, flipping the signs to Bellinger. Walker deals and Puig will lay off. 
the always entertaining Yasiel Puig. You never know what you're going to see. How about a lumber lollipop right there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, whatever it tastes like, I'll take his word for it. It's been a full count. Two for the first five hitters. Five spot in the Dodger batting order. Dodger fans know this song well, but the five spot in their order has been the problem position in the lineup for Dave Roberts. So he is going with Yasiel Puig tonight. For a very productive offense, unusual to have such a hole in the middle of your batting order. The Dodgers five hole hitters this year ranking next to last in the major leagues in batting average. Just a 215 average and they were bottom five in the league in RBIs. I mean that is a run producer position. It's amazing. One through four all producing at very high levels though. They've been able to cover it. Four count. We a free swing of fouls it away. They're able to stay alive. Yes, yeah, for an hour. Sorry, Brian. Yes, yeah, Puig is one of those guys that wears his emotions on his sleeve. If he gets a couple of hits here to start this series, he may carry the whole team. He could really go crazy. Guys, this is pitch 32. Oh. Nobody out. Somebody's getting out. Runner takes off Bellinger and Puig fouls it away. He can't get anybody to swing and miss. He. Almost threw that slider on the corner, didn't get it. Yeah, I don't know if it's just me or not, Dennis. But it seems like he's really on his breaking pitch and that split finger, especially, really slowing Slows himself down. down. Right? Yeah. It's like he's telegraphing uh -huh. a little bit. It's from nearby Yukaipa, California, San Bernardino area. Put a lot into this start. Expecting to be the game two starter when this all began, but the wild card madness. The fact that Zach Greinke could not get through the fourth inning with a six nothing lead sent Tori Lovello into motion. Robbie Ray ended up pitching very well. For Arizona. Took him out of that game one spot so Walker. Doing all he can Zach Godley another starter. Is getting loose in the Diamondbacks bullpen as Puig has one in the right center. And that's going to get down and go to the wall. Bellinger off to the races he'll try to score. Here comes a throw. It is not in time. Yasiel Puig drives in one. Four to nothing, Dodgers. Boy, the Dodgers got it going on, man. I'll tell you, he can't throw by a ball by anybody. Three-two fastball up out over the plate. He drills it. He drills this ball. I thought it was just going to be a base hit, but meanwhile, if you're talking one hop off the wall. That was a missile. Real calm body. Great swing. And Bellinger was not running on the pitch, and yet he still scored from first. I thought there was going to be a play at the plate, but the ball took like three hops, slowed down. He was safe, easy. Now Curtis Granderson. Now it's just a matter of getting Godly ready in the pen. He's a starter. He is not a guy that gets loose quickly. And Lavello is trying to buy one more batter. He sends his shortstop Marte to have a quick chat. Godley this is an absolute getting loose as fast as he nightmare. Can. This is an absolute nightmare. He couldn't start off any worse for the Diamondbacks. Having a hard time even drumming up in his saliva right there, Walker. You feel for him. That's a lonely spot on a mound in a situation like this. Curtis Granderson takes a strike. One ball, one strike on the 35th pitch of the inning. Puig with an RBI double. Four hits and a walk in the inning, and so many deep counts. Got to keep playing baseball. Get him over. Had that curveball there that he could have pulled, but he's he can eyeball it with the best of them, Granderson. Granderson coming to the Dodgers in mid-August from the New York Mets. Curtis got off to a great start with the Dodgers. It four home runs in his first six games as a Dodger including a grand slam but it was a slow ride for Granderson the rest of the way. 
part of that platoon in left field with Kike Hernandez. Granderson gets a call against the right hander Walker. They'll ask if he went. Yes, he did. Third base umpire Alan Porter. That looked pretty close from here. You'll see this is a good look. Yeah, yeah he, he got the head out. He did. Two and two the count. Sixth batter of the game for the Dodgers offensively. And a swing and a miss, and Granderson strikes out, and that is the first out for Taiwan Walker. For the fist bump. Get the first out. Here's Yasmani Grandal. Dave Roberts told us he had a lot of deliberation tonight about Grandal versus Austin Barnes, who has been catching well and hitting well for the Dodgers. Figured you might see Barnes in game two tomorrow. The Dodgers will have Rich Hill on the mound tomorrow, so it is Grandal against the right handed starter who gets the start, albeit a switch hitter. There's Barnes. Obviously, Grandall's much better left handed hitter. And Tor Lovello, if nothing else, after the strikeout, he's going to leave him in for at least one more hitter in hopes that he can get out of this inning and give the Diamondbacks a couple more rather than have to go to his pin so early. You hate talking this kind of strategy this early, but if you can retire Grandall, you could walk the eighth place hitter, get the pitcher to the plate. There is a way out, but it is an uncomfortable way out for Walker as he wants an appeal. They ask, able to check his swing was Grandall. Two and one. They weren't kidding about a lot of high fastballs, huh? No. No. And you can live up there provided your other pitches are somewhere close to the zone to get some swings. You get ahead in the count, and you can get some guys to chase upstairs. Former Dodger Zach Greinke, former Cy Young Award winner with the Royals. Had his troubles in the wild card game. And there is a strike. Two and two on the Dodger catcher. Seems to be getting his second wind a little bit here. He's loose. Yeah. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Arizona can swing the bat. We know that. And they put up some big offensive numbers against L.A. this year. Albeit they are dealing with Kershaw tonight. The way this postseason is going, no lead is safe. Hey, that's the way things started in the wild card game. Remember, the Diamondbacks jumping all over the Rockies, and the Rockies came storming back against Grinky. That was a six-nothing lead for Arizona. Grinky three and two thirds. Randall a swing and a miss. So Walker has come back with back-to-back K's. Two gone Logan in the inning. Side. Yeah, Grandall does him a favor, swings at a fastball out of the zone, up and away. He's trying to throw it in, throws it away. He'll take anything. He needed that out worse than the Dodgers needed a base hit. And with that second out, Tori Lovello is going to walk Forsyth to bring the pitcher Kershaw up. The pitcher bats in the first. It's the sweetest sentence you could ever hear if you're a starting pitcher. Right. Kershaw hasn't thrown a pitch in almost 30 minutes. He'll take all the runs he can get. Now he's going to try to drive in one himself. Clayton hit 184 this year. He drove in a couple of runs. Swings the bat pretty well. Handles the bat well and takes it very seriously as well. And so seriously that Walker, knowing that, drops a curveball in for a strike. 45 pitches in what is now a 26 minute half inning for Taiwan Walker. Walker pitch against the Dodgers in September just about a month ago it was September 7th he pitched terrific against L.A. six innings only one run had an RBI double in the game that sent Arizona to their 13th consecutive win 
that victory Walker had over L.A. on the 7th of September. Kershaw takes a strike. And a breaking ball from Walker. Well, we know the Diamondbacks had a game Wednesday night. The Dodgers have not had a game since last Sunday. But Dave Roberts was telling us before the game they've had some scrimmages, a couple, three of them this week, with live pitching to try to keep their hitters sharp. And they certainly look sharp. And the inning finally ends after 48 pitches, a four spot, 27 minute bottom of the first. The big blow. <laughs> Justin Turner, a three-run blast. Yasiel Puig adds to it. What a start for L.A. Uh, what a scene here on a Friday night. Bright moon shining on Chavez Ravine here. Big crowd, over 50,000 to see this National League Division Series. And a boatload of pressure on the Dodgers. Just letting a lot of air out of that balloon in the first inning with Justin Turner going deep. Puig with an RBI double. And the Dodgers offense has given their ace Kershaw a four-run lead to work with. And he is on the attack right away. Starts Brandon Drury with strike one. Well, he does he throw strikes or what, Kershaw? I was gonna say, what's this half hour gonna do for him? But he fills it up with strikes. I don't think he minded. <laughs> Dodgers coming around in the bottom of the first. Kershaw in the top of the first. Got an 0-2 count on Peralta. Ended up walking him. That was the only blemish of the inning. Had two strikeouts. In the first inning, got Goldschmidt and Martinez to end the inning. Kershaw deals an 0-2, and that one's in there, called strike three. And down goes Brandon Drury. Three consecutive strikeouts for Kershaw. Yeah, you talk about an 0-2 slider that's going to freeze him. He's outside corner, little backdoor piece, but rolls over the middle. Freezes him. Never swung the bat. Three strikes in a row. Finishes him off with a really slider middle. Yeah, I don't think that's where he wanted it. But again, he caught uh, another Diamondback hitter guessing. 
Here's Adam Rosales. As Joe mentioned when we hit the air tonight some decisions in the lineup for Tori Lovello and one of the big ones was Rosales at third base. It's the right handed bat against Clayton Kershaw here tonight and Rosales bounces to third it's fumbled by Turner recovers not in time Rosales will reach normally sure handed Justin Turner. What a great oh, pick oh, when he oh, picked oh, it I said this is a great play then he fumbled it. It'll be an E5 on Turner. Watch this pick you talk about a breaking ball high breaking ball. In between hops and he goes for it, charges it picks it then fumbles it. And there are a lot of people that would tell you that were it not for Nolan Arenado being in the National League that Turner would already have a couple of gold gloves. He's that good so that's a rare mistake. It'll be a one out base runner for the Diamondbacks here is Cattell Marte and he's after the first pitch. Joe just getting back to the third base situation with the Diamondbacks Rosales gets the call today Jake Lamb had a 100 plus RBI season but Tori Lovello said I'm not ready to commit to him playing against a left hander just yet. Yeah he had four hits in the wild card game too but said they had a recipe that they try to follow and they were going to stick to it tonight. And that's why Rosales is in there. Lamb a 144 hitter against lefties this season so they stick with that. And you figure Lamb will be a presence in this game at some point certainly in this series at some point. I would imagine that he would have a chance to start the game tomorrow game two even though Hill the lefty is on the mound better splits right left versus Rich Hill. There's Lamb and those splits are why he sits this opener. That's as bad as it gets the 144 isn't it. I mean yeah. Really scuffled the second half. Diamondbacks looking for a quick strike here after the Dodgers score four in the bottom of the first. Well, we mentioned a lot of starting pitchers getting roughed up here early in the postseason. Nothing, no lead has been safe, and it happened again today with the Yankees against the Indians, with the Indians coming back to winning that game in extra innings. 8 3 lead in that one by the Yankees. Yeah, Lenore the Yan hit the grand slam. The Yankees got six off Kluber. Off Kluber. You got to win that game. You get six off Kluber. Now, Cattell Marte made a major impact on the wild card game on Wednesday. You know, he comes into this division series flying high with confidence. Came with Walker in the deal with Seattle. I don't like calling any player a throw in, but. Wasn't expected to be in this prominent of a role with Arizona. But Marte has been able to answer the bell. Two triples in the wild card game had three hits on Wednesday night. How about the triples, huh? Arizona. And one by a relief pitcher. <laughs> that may have been the most fun of all to watch. Yeah, Archie Bradley. Diamondbacks had four triples in the wild card game on Wednesday. Pollock was the other. Marte fouls one away. Well, it wasn't by design that Marte would be in this position. I mean, he's their third shortstop with injuries to Ahmed and Owings. They were hoping to get Chris Owings back for this postseason. Brought him back from instructional league where he was trying to play his way back into shape, but apparently wasn't ready. Not going to be a Schwarber thing, never. Yeah. Last year, my right. goodness. Owings fractured his finger in late July. He is close to being ready. Not comfortable quite yet as Kershaw takes something off and way out in front on the big hook. That is his Marte. That is a hook from hell right there. I'll tell you what. I mean, when he features this, this is really unhittable. <laughs> See the shortstop story for the Arizona Diamondbacks. Owings out with a fractured finger. Nick Ahmed with the fractured right wrist. He's done for the season. And Owings is still a possibility. Was in an instructional league game today. And Kershaw just abuses the young shortstop Marte as he does so many with that big curveball. That's what you call an abuse. It's a good I, word for I it. I like huh? how he saves it. Yeah. You know, he doesn't wear it out. No. He, he uses it in good spots, picks the right hitters. And the bottom third of the order against Clayton Kershaw got nothing off of him all year. He wears those guys out. 
With Grandall flipping the signs, Kershaw facing Jeff Mathis, the Arizona catcher. This was the other real interesting storyline coming into play today. Who was going to catch Taiwan Walker? Ionetta with terrific numbers, just shy of 300 against Kershaw in his career. But instead, it is Mathis who has missed, missed a ton of time this season. Injured his wrist on a foul ball while catching. Just returned the last weekend of the season. Kershaw pumps one in, one and two the count. If that spot gets up, that's the ninth spot, the pitcher spot. It'll be Christian Walker who will pinch hit. Gives you an idea that Lavello will gladly make the move with a chance to score some runs. Kershaw trying to put it away right here. He'll check on the runner instead. Look at these numbers. I mean, there are superlatives <laughs> you can offer. Doug Marino, our stats man, does a great job, but 98 and 1 with four runs or more of support. Who beat him? How'd they yeah, beat him? That's what you gotta know. <laughs> One, two pitch. Oh, and it's in there. Kershaw. Three more punch outs. He's got five and two scoreless. And it's four nothing Dodgers. to the top of the Dodgers batting order after they batted around in the first and Tori Lavello is going to go to his bullpen one of his starters in the regular season Zach Godley will be on the mound to start this second inning against Los Angeles short night for Taiwan Walker Zach Godley's had a nice year for them see the low ERA Godley started 25 games for the Diamondbacks Nice year he had last year coming off a real bad year last year. Just like this whole Diamondback pitching staff they just turned it around. You see the nasty sinker there. The sinker cutter curveball change likes his curveball but you see the movement on that fastball. Most of his strikeouts 
throughout the course of the regular season coming on that curveball. And Mathis putting down the slider here, the cutter. And that's a pretty good looking pitch. Didn't get the call. They'll ask and able to check that swing. First base umpire is Phil Cuzzy. I got to add that. <laughs> oh, that ball's right there in the corner. Chris Taylor had a single and a run scored in the first inning. Got it started with a bang for Los Angeles. There's a strike. Three and one to count. Pitch. Yeah, it's, it's a cutter. Just you know, almost like a, a batting practice pitch. I'm sure it gets in there, but it's got good movement to it. And a hitter's count for Taylor, and Allen is in there. Three and two the count. Was such a furious start for Los Angeles. Crowd into it heavy. Now it's settled in a little bit, and Godley trying to put the lid back on this one for the time being. There's that curveball. Good one. Well, his job is pretty simple, although only in definition because he's got to try and hold the Dodgers right there and give his offense a chance to cut into that deficit. Quiet this crowd a little bit. Three and two the count. And it's oh. in there. A call. Strike three. Down goes Taylor. After falling behind 3 0, Taylor punches him out. First batter faces a K. All of the outs for the Dodgers are strikeouts. Hey, a reminder that you can live every postseason moment with MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. It's the only place to get it all live radio feeds, video highlights, pitch tracking, stat cast, and much more. Download at bat app today. Seeger jumping on that first pitch. He fouls it away. Good Thank finish you. for Seeger at the end of the year. Last day of the season at three hits. Hit 205 over his last 26 games. And if you want to call it a down year, the year was still terrific from Corey Seeger. Hit 295. He drove in 77 runs. He's one of the elite shortstops in the game. But he is a. As he sends that one down the left field line, slicing foul. Dave Roberts tell us, Joe, the, his work ethic, how he grinds on his mechanics. Gave him a day off Monday. He came back anyway just to try to keep his swing fine tuned. And I think that Sunday game against the Colorado Rockies certainly going to go a long way for him in this postseason. Well, he had a bad elbow, Brian. They were really worried about him from a defensive standpoint. It's his throwing elbow, and they were trying to nurse him through September. And people were wondering how much it was affecting his swing, too. Godley's got him at a one two count and he misses low. Big strong guy. That's where he finished among shortstops this year. Yeah, you have to look twice sometimes when the, he swings the bat because you think Bellinger right away, don't you? Mm -hmm. Same kind of body type. They kind of drop on that back leg and yeah. uppercut. Launch angle. But Seeger more of a high ball hitter, Bellinger a low ball hitter. For the most part. Godley with 25 starts this year. He can certainly give Tori Lavello some length in this game, which he desperately needs. Made just one appearance out of the bullpen. That was to get him ready for a potential bullpen effort. And Seeger bounces to second. First two have been retired for Godley. Well, Justin Turner lit the fuse here in Dodger Stadium. Take a look at StatCast powered by Amazon Web Services. Left the bat over 103 miles an hour, 424 feet, and a three run bomb for Justin Turner. Well, it sounded good, looked good, it was good. Had more walks than strikeouts this year. Turner truly turned himself into 
something special at the plate. It was thought to be a utility guy with the Mets. It's amazing to watch some of these players and with new information, with a lot of the analytics discussion, the fact that Turner is one of those players who is trying to elevate the ball, hit it in the air, drive it. He was under the tutelage of Marlon Byrd and implemented that big leg kick, which gave him big power. Well, he got off this year early, didn't he? He's hitting about 380. Great eye. Yeah, he just does an offer out of the zone. Had a hamstring injury in mid-May. Returned on June 9th. It was about a three-week out for Justin Turner. Nobody better with two strikes than this guy, and he's as patient as it gets and draws the two-out walk here. And a man on for Godly. Lauren Shahadi is with us for this entire series. She's got more on Justin Turner. What do you have, Lauren? Yeah, we have a team with arguably the best pitcher on the planet and young stars galore. Dave Roberts refers to Justin Turner as the glue. I asked Justin why. He said, I love to work with the young guys. Pay what I've learned forward. Dave Roberts said he's a baseball rat. He knows the rules better than their bench coach. He calls people out when they need to be called out. He checks all the best boxes. He's a, he's a leader. Uh, he's one of those guys, like you said, Brian, uh, maybe a utility the guy thought of as a utility mm -hmm. player until he got an opportunity here, and he's made the best of it. Bellinger turns on one. They kind of reinvent themselves. You know, I think of uh, Charlie Blackman kind of sure. the same way when he first came up. He's made himself into a frontline player, won a batting title. Those guys make adjustments, they learn, and they get better. And you get proved that you're an everyday player. Yeah. Some guy you get sort of blacklisted or something as a utility guy. There's a strike to Bellinger. Quickly 0 and 2. Godly on Bellinger. I mean, I'll throw out a couple of names too that we forget sometimes, but Brandon Phillips was that kind of guy. Remember when he went from Cleveland to the Reds? And then don't forget about Joey Bats, Jose Bautista, what he was with the Pirates, what he turned himself into. Yeah, wow. As a Toronto Blue Jay. And Mostly with that leg kick. That's in the dirt. Mathis fires. Turner's on the run. That ball's in the center field. And now Turner on his way to third. That is exactly what Lauren was talking about. Instincts everywhere, especially on the bases. And Turner able to advance to second on the pitch in the dirt. And then move to third on the throwing area. Yeah, that's a read where you're a secondary lead. You just go. I'm gone. Nice play by Mathis just to get rid of it, but throws it away. I didn't think that was far enough away. He read that too into center field. Knew he could get the third. You see, Mathis makes a pretty good play. They can't pick it over there. Mm. Marte trinkles into center field. You got a runner at third now with two outs. Down and in. What a play back there by Mathis. That was a beauty. Oh. Smothered it. That's a run, man. The error will show up in the scorebook. This one won't. That was big time. Took it right in the gut. Keeps that the runner at third base. So far in front of him, it he was. didn't know which way he was going to go. Two and two, the count. Godley's first inning. Retired the first two hitters. Now runner at third. And Bellinger, a big swing and a miss. Mathis will put the tag on him to secure it, and that will retire the side. Five of the six out for the Dodgers are K's. They've got four on the board early.
take a look at tonight's Playmakers presented by Alfa Romeo. And how about the Cy Young Award winners? Those with the hardware that are on display in the postseason. Already a rough start to the postseason for Zach Grinke. Clayton Kershaw has won three of those Cy Young Awards. He's trying to enter into a even smaller group who have won four Cy Young Awards. Clayton Kershaw and he is off to a very good start here tonight. Two scoreless innings with the Dodgers scoring four in the bottom of the first. Kershaw has racked up the K's. Facing Zach Godley. Godley just entering the game in the second inning after the 48 pitch first inning by Taiwan Walker. So gets the at bat. When's the last time you saw a 48 pitch inning? Hmm. You don't see him in the regular season because no. that is an automatic hook. Yeah. Especially with a young pitcher. Usually get in over the 30 pitch range, right? And it's the danger zone as Kershaw puts another K on the board. And Eck, his name starts with K, and he is racking him up quickly. Yeah, he, he's a punch out master. He's seen everything. That little slider there, another slider left out over the middle, but the hook, the hook from hell. See ya. Fastball <laughs> on the corner. And the last one slider down and in. Godly takes an ungodly oh, swing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Lord, they missed that one a long way. <laughs> yeah. Six strikeouts for Kershaw. Now to work on the top of the order is Peralta with a big hack on the first pitch. Kershaw could be joining Roger Clemens, Randy Johnson, Greg Maddox, and Steve Carlton as. The only pitchers to have won four Cy Young Awards. Carlton won four, as did Greg Maddox. The big unit won five. How about that guy? Clemens won seven. There's the great Sandy Koufax. Yeah, he looks great. Kershaw got those comparisons very early. Even as a teenager, I remember spring training. Kershaw's first year as a 19-year-old. and. The scouting report on this kid from Texas that he's got a Koufax curveball that almost immediately sends you to the back of the wall saying oh, whoa yeah. whoa whoa the, the winning percentage is to ridiculous Crazy. almost 700. But is that why he's wears 32 I mean he doesn't have 32 22 hello. <laughs> yeah. I saw Sandy over there and I got 32 on my skull <laughs> one two pitch oh. a little tapper foul you see dropped down a little bit look changed his arm angle. Does he do that that much? I don't, I don't think so. That's the Rich Hill influence. He's got to be left-handed hitter too. I mean, yeah. In his 14 strikeout game against Milwaukee at Miller Park back in June, he did this on a number of occasions. That's and his sidearm cheese, right? <laughs> yeah. See it from a different angle. He's tough enough to hit. One-two pitch over the top this time, and a bouncer to Seeger. Two gone for Kershaw. By the way, he settled the at bat with Mathis so quickly we didn't have a chance to tell you the one, the 98 and one. Oh, right, We're right, getting four yeah. more. The one was the 2014 Division Series Game One against St. Louis. St. Louis had his number. That was didn't the they? team. Yeah, they beat him a couple times. Yeah, the Dodgers. I think he blew a 6-2 lead. Is what it was, that one game? Well, he's won 144 games in the regular season. He's, if he stays healthy, he won't have any trouble winning 100 more, if not more than that. Oh. Pollock sends one deep in the left. Granderson on the run, looking up. Goodbye. A.J. Pollock with a solo shot. And the Diamondbacks on the board off Kershaw here in the third. That is their first hit. And it is a long ball by A.J. Pollock, whose power bat has returned to the Diamondbacks in the second half. That's a little shocker there. Boom, that ball jumped off of Pollock's bat. He gets a fastball and he attacks it. Boy, did their dugout need this. They needed something to liven everything up. A little leg kick, good extension on a good low pitch, and a low laser out of here. Kershaw did give up a career high in homers this year. He allowed 23 this season. As Goldschmidt fouls it away. Ball's down a little bit. He goes down there and gets it. Like you said, that little kick and that ball was a laser. And Dodger Stadium doesn't hold them like they used to. No, they did not. Especially for a laser. You used to have to have a cannon to get one out of here. 
Goldschmidt, a high fly ball, easy enough for Puig. And Kershaw bends a little, is through the third. A.J. Pollock gets the Diamondbacks on the board for the first time in the division series. The 2017 National League Division Series is presented by T-Mobile, America's best unlimited network. Beautiful moon up above on a Friday night at Dodger Stadium, 1000 Vin Scully Avenue. Pleasure to be here. Always great to be at Dodger Stadium, especially with this kind of setting in a postseason. Dodgers with five consecutive division titles it is World Series or bust for their fans this season as Yasiel Puig starts it for L.A. Zach Godley back out for his second inning. He's got balls going every which way doesn't he. His ball movement on his fastball you see that hook it's like my goodness Excellent. I get those funny swings. Excellent curveball. A little hop in the step of the Diamondbacks after that home run. Puig able to lay off this one. One and two the count. Puig with an RBI double capped off the four run first inning. All four of those runs came in before Taiwan Walker recorded an out. Walker did strike out three in that inning. But not before the Dodgers scored four on four hits and two walks. Kershaw just giving up a home run to A.J. Pollock. Pollock jumping on the first pitch. And the first hit and run against Kershaw tonight. Arizona is a ball club that can swing the power bats. They can certainly hit their way back into this one quickly. As Puig fouls one off his foot. Drops him in a heap at home plate. Well, they missed Pollock last year, right? Right away, they didn't have him all year. Nothing was went right for the Arizona last year. Nothing. Pitching was horrible. But they can swing the bats. I always could. Then he added J.D. Martinez. My goodness. 
Now you ask what the difference is in the pitching staff and it's interesting Tori Lavella will give you many non pitching answers before he dives into yeah. the improvement of Grinky does talk about Pollock having him in center field Pollock missed most of the year last year all but 12 games with a broken elbow missed some time earlier this year as well as Puig takes a ball I'll ask if he went he's able to check it but to me the big turnaround is Arizona team pitching I mean the pitching is look at that I mean come on what a turnaround you know, 16 years since they were in the top three in the ERA race worst ERA in the National League last year only the Dodgers had a better ERA this year as Puig takes one inside he almost got hit last time up same kind of thing throws his hands at it pulls him back luckily got the bat I think foul ball yeah, this is reviewable here he saw Bob Guerin the bench coach go to the phone just to take a look let's see where it hit him yeah right on the handle of the bat which is a foul ball it's hard to do Puig's lucky says play on I mean, if anybody knows, it's yeah. Lucille Puig, and he's looking in the dugout, too. <laughs> I thought the same thing. But you know what was interesting, though, about Puig? After this, he walks over, he looks at the dugout, says, no, no, I'm good. It didn't hit me. I'm hacking. Fly ball into center, long run for Pollock. He's there, and Puig is retired. A moment ago, Lauren caught up with Diamondback skipper Tori Lovello. Number six, Curtis Randerson. Troy, 25 starts for Zach Godley. How many innings do you think he can give you? Well, we're going to try and run him as far as we possibly can. Uh, he's been up to over 100 pitches recently, so uh, he's an important piece in this game, and we're going to let him, let him take it from here. I know Ionetta has good numbers against Kershaw. What was behind the decision to start Jeff Mathis? Well, I just wanted the relationship between Jeff and, um, and Zach to kind of shine a little brighter than it did. Unfortunately, it didn't equal what I wanted. Troy, thanks so much. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. And our thanks to Tori Lovello spending a few moments between innings not the start he wanted not the start he wanted to try to begin to work out the pieces for the rest of the game here with Taiwan Walker he said Zach I think he meant Taiwan Walker with the relationship between Mathis and Walker good way to put it the way he said it isn't it mm -hmm. Just didn't blossom today no balls and a strike on Curtis Granderson who launches one foul. Ionetta sits this one out with Mathis in the game as Granderson takes one low. That's his best pitch, that curveball. He wants you to swing at it. It's hard. Yes. Like his moving on the fastball. He's four pitch pitcher, man. That's a good hammer and that's a swing. Third base umpire Alan Porter raises the thumb on Granderson. And a strikeout for Godley. Boy, have we seen some punch outs in this game? He could not hold up. He threw the head at it. Saw two curveballs in a row, just couldn't hold up on the second one. That's how good it is. And that's what he's geared to is that low pitch. Excellent low ball hitter. And couldn't lay off. Granderson has punched out twice. Two outs in the inning. Here is Yasmani Grandal. A little half swing. Again, they will ask. This time, the hitter checks the swing. Grandal 1 0. Seventeen outs in this game. Back to your point, 12 punches. I mean, really? <laughs> That's what this game's come to anyway, hasn't it? I don't mean this game, I mean the game of baseball. Turn award to hitting coach of the Dodgers. Done an excellent job, former Diamondbacks hitting coach. All across Major League Baseball, a new strikeout record was set. Matter of fact, new strikeout record each of the last 10 seasons. We have Major League Baseball, home runs are off the charts.
Godley in a one two count on Grandall and a swing and a miss. There's a strikeout again. Mathis will have to secure it does so and Zach Godley has come in and settled it down the bull sprinting his way off the field for one Dodgers. Climbing the Mountain presented by 10 Cup Mountain Whiskey. How about J.D. Martinez in the spotlight? 62 games with the Diamondbacks, 29 home runs, 65 runs batted in. And for a guy who played that few games, he pushed his way, Joe, into that MVP discussion. It, it would be pretty remarkable to win it in half a season with a new ball club. But you can see what a difference he made for their team against left handed pitching. That was why they got him. They knew he was good against left handed pitching, and he's made a big difference for them. Huge difference. Show him in that image wearing the, the Little League style jersey for Players Weekend. They called him Flacco, and a bouncing ball that eats up Logan Forsythe that ends up in center field. That had a ton of top spin on yeah, it. Yeah, that's like a Super Bowl going up the middle, what waiting for that really second really. hop. So a base hit for J.D. Martinez gives us a chance to hear an interview between innings with Lauren and Dodger manager Dave Roberts. Dave one hit one run off Kershaw. What have you seen so far from him? I think uh, he's had good fastball command sliders been good and he just made the one mistake to Pollock. You said Justin Turner just gets it. What can you say about the start he gave this team. I, I told you uh, he, he's the glue to this club and he's such a baseball player and he's a he's a big player that makes big time plays and big time moments and that was a huge lift for us. Appreciate it Dave. Thanks. All right, thank you. Uh, the man that called Doc Dave Roberts manager of the year of the National League last season and his third baseman with a three run bomb in the first inning. Dodgers off to a fast start scored four in the first Kershaw giving up two hits now both coming on first pitch swings ambush swing by Pollock for a home run in the third with two away and then Martinez on the first pitch a leadoff single here in the fourth that brings up Brandon Drury different setup here even with a double play in order behind Kershaw they've got 
Seeger way away from the bag at second. Forsyth up the middle. So Forsyth, anything grounded to first, Forsyth's going to have to cover. Not the shortstop. On the ground, foul past third. You can see that pull, you know, Drury pulling the ball, let alone 2 0. Every position in the infield, especially with Kershaw, because he has such great command, is identified with a particular pitch. So the shortstop plays in the hole for what reason? What would be the pitch why he is so far in the hole with Kershaw? For me, it would be his slider down and into these right handed hitters. But Drury is a dead pull guy, so that's the way they're playing him. As you can see, he's trying to pull everything. But that's a massive hole on the right side. Mm -hmm. They don't even expect him to try to go the other way. So Kershaw works middle to end. Do you think he's going to cut down his swing? I mean, <laughs> negative. This day and age. Negative. Please. All sliders up to this point. So Grandall puts down with Martinez at first. Yeah, dot that corner. How about that? Two and two. Kershaw misses upstairs. And that that corner's there for the taking, and he missed badly on that. Kind of out of sync a little bit. Longtime pitching coach Rick Honeycutt, Was former it? teammate of mine and mine. Yep, and a great pitching coach for LA for many years. Back to the slider. Full count with Martinez at first. And on the ground, right there is Seeger. Out at second. Out at first. A double play. Step right into the trap. You and said Drury it. bounces you said into it. the 6 4 3. That's why he's there. 3 2 slider. Room service double play. Ball came up on Seeger a little bit, but they turn it over. He's got to love that. Yes. He was out of sync there and he gets a double play ball. It's a lifesaver. Two outs, one swing of the bat. Here comes Adam Rosales now. Uh, Kershaw, just such a treat to watch. You can roll out superlative after superlative with Clayton Kershaw. But the last piece, you know, when we hit the air today, we were opened up our broadcast on TNT as the Cubs and the Nats were starting. But X said something very important that the last piece to the Kershaw puzzle would be a World Series title. And his performance last year in the division series, coming back with just one day of rest, coming back for the save in game five, that all bounces forward to what Kershaw, the burden he has had to shoulder for the Dodgers. This year, Eck, it feels like the Dodgers are much more balanced, much more, uh, much more of an arsenal in their pitching rotation now, so he doesn't have to come back on three days rest. You might see him out of the bullpen, but he doesn't have to bear that burden this season I as agree. he has in the past. I agree, and uh, he's primed for this whole setting, as the Dodgers are. Five shots at it, five in a row, right? This is the fifth. Mm -hmm. West title. I mean, this guy's done everything you could do as a pitcher. Last World Series title, 1988. Don't I know? I don't know anything about that. Yeah. Yeah. Staying away from that as Rosales draws the walk, sprints his way to first base. This is no joke, fans. We drove into the ballpark for the first time yesterday. <laughs> we pull up to the security entrance. And I've already made up my mind, Joe. I'm not going to say anything about 1988. We're not rolling any footage. The first thing XA says when he sees the security guard, yeah, I'm the guy who gave up the home run. Let me in. I don't have my credential yet. <laughs> oh, he took one look at me and He's said, like, take it. We've, take been, <laughs> we've been waiting for you. <laughs> right this way, Mr. Eckersley. Yeah, where you been so long? Uh, Tommy Lasorda managing that 88 ball club and never seen him jump so high. But you're a good sport about it, Eck. And, hey, uh, man, it's been know, 30 years <laughs> almost. Come on, man. You, you still made it to the Hall of Fame. Yeah. That took the sting out of it, I'll tell you what. <laughs> well, you know, I do. I, I will say this uh, publicly. The fact you and Kirk Gibson have a really interesting relationship together. 
Kirk is uh, struggling right now with Parkinson's and, and he's putting on a lot of fundraisers and awareness and you've been a big part of that with him. Kudos yeah. to you partner. Yeah that's cool though. I mean it's, it's a good thing. You know anything to help out regardless of what happened between us. There's, There's that hole. Bouncer. Nice play. Bellinger underhands it to second. He got oh, him. What a play. Athlete right there. What an athlete. Covering some ground. Cody Bellinger. He'll be the rookie of the year. Flashing a little leather for the final out. Fighters bring us back here at Dodger Stadium in the road ahead presented by Mitsubishi Chicago Cubs Washington Nationals game two followed by game two of our series here Arizona and L.A. tomorrow on TBS the Chicago Cubs strike first against the Washington Nationals Wow, Hendricks with a beautiful performance today on the mound for Chicago seven shutout innings against the heavy hitting Nationals. Only two hits allowed. He beat Steven Strasburg today. First man up is Forsyth into center field. That's going to fall right off the end of the bat. And Logan Forsyth breaks up this run for Godley. Godley had retired four in a row and six of seven. Number 22. Yeah, you don't really have to hit it hard. You see the end of the bat, like you said, that slider that crunched him. Ball drops in easy in front of Pollock. He didn't hit it hard, but the mistake was he left that pitch up where he could reach it. Forsythe gets to start today over Chase Utley. Dave Roberts saying he wanted Utley available off the bench in a big spot. And so Forsythe brings a little bit better defense at this point of Utley's career. He's an improved defender over Utley. But you got to figure Utley's going to factor in this one as Kershaw tries to bunt him over. Pretty tough fits to bunt. I'll the say. Ball's biting in on you like that. 
try to get a strike to bunt. It's easier said than done. Late movement on that breaking ball. Woodward was trying to get Kershaw's attention. He never looked down there, so he just assumed he's bunting again. And then Roberts uh, barking out at his third base coach, Chris Woodward. Kershaw squares. Drops it down. Godley will take the out at first. Oh, my goodness. He must have a thing about throwing Ooh. to first, huh? He didn't even look to second. Right. I, don't, I think he has a thing about throwing to bases. When you flip it like that, that far away. Sacrifice bunt for Kershaw. It led the Dodgers this year in that category. Hey, a reminder, the E-League Premier 2017 playoffs conclude next week. Join us for the preview show. It is tonight, and it is immediately following postseason coverage on TBS E-League. I don't know if he had a shot at second base, but he didn't even come close to attempting it, did he? That's my point, though. He didn't look because there's no way he wanted to throw it to you second. You got it. Kershaw moves a runner to second base. Top of the order. Third time through the batting order for the Dodgers. And here is Chris Taylor who singled and scored and then struck out looking. First batter face for Godley was Taylor. First time through the batting order. The Dodgers go four for seven with two walks and four runs. Second time through the batting order. This would be Godley's trip through the Dodger nine. One for seven with a walk and a sacrifice. So far no runs. Godley has settled it down after Taiwan Walker scuffled at a 48 pitch first inning. Taylor takes a strike. This guy's been an unsung hero. He has been so important to this team because he's played all over the place uh, defensively. He can hit in different places in the batting order. He can run. He's got an excellent arm. And oh, by the way, they, they got him for nothing from the Mariners and he hit 21 homers and drove in 72. Three years with the Mariners as a utility infielder. Had a broken wrist while a Mariner. And had his defensive struggles. I think that made him expendable, but he's another guy that's turned himself into something special with health and with maybe a different viewpoint of uh, how he is viewed as a player by an organization. High motor guy, right? Yeah, and one of the things he had to do is kind of take inventory of who he was and what he was and where he was going. And this winner really took to a different batting style with that leg kick that was encouraged to him by Justin Turner. 120 games over two years with Seattle. He hit one homer. Never heard of him. I mean, it just came yeah. out of, to me like came out of nowhere. One homer in those three years with the Mariners, 21 with the Dodgers in 2017. He is in a hitter's count with a runner at second base. Godley's been terrific trying to keep it going here and Taylor is going to walk. First and second now. Yeah, just, Godley's done a nice job up to this point. You know, some strikeouts with the curveball. That's a lot of breaking stuff. It has been, and I think so much so that they're laying off that pitch. Yes. Now they're seeing it for a second time, and they're laying off that one in the dirt. Mike Buncher on his way out, sent out by the skipper. Forty-nine pitches for Godley. He's pitching in his third inning with one out. Remember, Walker threw 48 pitches in the first. This is a key spot here for the Diamondbacks. You could understand why Tori Lavello would want to send his pitching coach out. Could be the game. You never know. But it's 4-1. The heart of the order is coming up for L.A. I mean, I tell you, Godley's got a good sinker. His fastball moves a lot. And that's what he can use right here as a ground ball double play, obviously. First ball swinger, right, Sager? Exactly. Got to tie his arms down to keep him from swinging at the first one. He's done it both plate appearances tonight. Walked in the first and scored. He was on when Turner went deep. Bounced to second base his last time up. And on the first pitch, that is through. Base hit. 
And they're going to wind up Forsyth. He's on his way. He will score. Play oh. third. Over the back. Taylor, he gets back. Everybody safe. And another run is in for the Dodgers. Taylor, right in your face. He goes first to third. Play right in front of him. That is gutsy base running right there. Good hitting by Sager to hit that sinker the other way to begin with. Watch this sinker down the way. Not a bad pitch. He stays right on it and drills this ball in left field. He hit it pretty hard, too. I thought they might have a play at Forsyth, but they did. Look at Taylor. He's just getting after it. Almost comes off the bag, gets back in, but he's, he's going for it right in front of your face. Almost got him. There's nothing slow or slow down about Chris Taylor. If Rosales keeps the tag on him, which most infielders do these days, He's got an out. Instead, it is first to third. Burning hot for the Dodgers again. A run is in to make it 5-1. And here is Turner. And as it turns out, Sager didn't hit it. A sinker he hit a changeup. That might have been the first changeup he threw. I haven't seen a changeup all night. And you can see the way they were lined up defensively with Marte really cheated up the middle. They expected Seager to try to pull the ball, and he crossed him up. I guess you're throwing change up. He should hold yeah. it. Yeah. First and third. Turner takes a ball inside. That is the beauty of the playoffs, how you see these adjustments. That's a sink. I mean, a change up. Look, he took away a lot off it, like sort of turned it over. Now, all the scouting reports, everything you hear coming into a game like this, everything that Godley would have seen all year on Seager. First pitch swinger, big swing, trying to do damage. Figures a change up's a great pitch. Well, it was. And well, he just went and with it. It was, and he got the ground ball he wanted. He just Where are you supposed to throw it on the ground? I mean, it was <laughs> he a didn't decent hit it pitch. At anybody. But once again, he's hacking, man. He can get to a lot of things. You got to throw it in the dirt when he's swinging. I mean, yeah, I really. Guess so. Corey Seager with the RBI. Turner's up there in a 1 1 count. First and third with one away. Godley needs a double play ball here. You watch Justin Turner swing, and it just feels like there are no areas to get him out. Not that he's going to get hit every time, but he fe it feels like he's on everything, and he's he like, sees everything. He's like floating to the ball, like, I got it. It's just an extra fraction to make an adjustment. Not to mention he would be an excellent member of the Night's Watch with that sweet beard he's got going. Tried to add to the lead. Two balls, two strikes. It's like he sees the ball so well. The, the leg kick is such a wonderful timing device for some hitters. It's it's too much movement for others. But some guys get it down. Ryan Zimmerman's another who's so good at a high leg kick and getting that front foot down and still being on time. Taylor and Seeger on the bags. Taylor walked. Seeger with the RBI single. And Turner able to lay off. Godley just fighting right now, fighting to get a swing. Watch how high this leg comes up. Now, you would think that you could throw the fastball by him, or you could quick pitch him with a slide step out of the stretch. No, he gets that foot down in plenty of time. And he's got great bat speed. Huge spot. Only in the fourth, but a chance to deliver more for Turner. And he sends that one into center field. That's going to get down. Base hit. Taylor scores easily. Justin Turner has driven in four. 6 1 Dodgers. Uh, he jammed him on a curveball, is what happened. But he, once again, like I said, Joe, he kept it up. You know, that's the problem. Didn't hit it very hard, but the ball's high. High curveball, sort of a get-me-over curveball. Didn't hit it very hard, but 
It works. It plays. RBI single center field. Big hit. As a hitter, when you get it one that's up, even if in that situation, you get get it tied up, ties you up, have a chance to adjust. Dodgers wrestle the momentum back. Godley had come on, had quieted things down for the Dodgers offensively. A.J. Pollock hit a home run in the third inning. But now Los Angeles right back at it. That is their third hit of the inning to go along with a walk. The only out was a Clayton Kershaw bunt. Here's Cody Bellinger. Two on, one away. This guy's got a long swing. It looks like a long, unorthodox, slow swing. It's anything but that. Great back speed. Wants the ball down. Godley misses with a changeup. One ball, one strike. He's been operating as the fifth starter this year. Diamondbacks relatively healthy with their starting pitchers this season, minus Shelby Miller. That's a roll over grounder to Godley. Oh, oh, almost no. can't find it. Everybody's safe. And it was all set up. You got a gold glover at first base in Goldschmidt. Godley tried to take it himself, and once he missed with Bellinger speed, no chance. And the bases are loaded. Yep, stay out of the way. Yeah, it would have been indecisive. He, did, he had second thoughts. He should have just let it go, like he said. Good pitch. He's made several good pitches and bad results. You see Goldsmith right there, ready to make the play. He just, it was hit so slow, maybe he thought, well, second thought, I'll take it myself. You know, it's an afterthought, got in the way, and it just, Ends up ugly. It's so much top spin on it. That second bounce just shot right past Godley. Efforts there. They want to do well, want to do right. But the wrong play, and it'll be an E1. And now the bases are loaded with Yasiel Puig coming up. Godley is a ground ball pitcher. Top five in the National League this year, getting those ground balls. Got a ground ball from Seeger, but a shift was on. Seeger punched it through. Infield halfway in. Puig can fly. It's a tough guy to double up. It's, it's a tough call here. You, you can't afford to give up any more runs. But halfway may not be far enough if you want to cut the runner off. The guy on deck might have as much to do with the infield configuration as anything. Granderson, who has struck out twice. Weed, big swing, fouls it away. We talk about this inning, how many balls were hit hard? Singer hit the ball hard, the changeup in the hole, but the other two were just flares out the center field. Doesn't matter, they all count. 6-1 Dodgers, two are in. RBIs from Seeger and Turner. Bases loaded for Yasiel Puig, who drove in a run with a single in the first. And a spinner misses. I saw some guys stretching in the Diamondbacks bullpen, but nobody throwing to my knowledge. Boy, he's working hard here. He's got that curveball now that he either spikes it or it's up. You know, right in between. He can't find it. Godley dealing a 2 1 on the ground. Let's see where the play goes. Marte has only one play. That's first. A run is in. Yasiel Puig drives in another. It's the second out, but it's 7-1, to one, Dodgers. Uh, and that's why I don't like that halfway in defense, because 
they didn't get anything of what they wanted. They didn't get the double play, and they weren't able to cut the runner off at the plate. I don't think it would have cut it off anyway if they, even if they were in, because he hit it. It's just a lucky hit to me. Curveball, he slams it to the ground. You'll never know. We'll never know if this would have been an out or not at the plate. The full hack doesn't hit it very hard at all, but it works. But look at Seeger. Look how far, look how big a lead he has mm -hmm. going on contact. They had no shot at all to get him. Yeah, with Rosales so far off the bag. you got to play him closer. Yeah. Seeger could take as much as he wanted. Now yeah. Granderson takes a strike. Three runs are in for the Dodgers. Another crooked number on the board for L.A. Scoring four in the first. Granderson is 0 for 2 with a couple of Ks. Eighth batter of the inning for Los Angeles. And a swing and a miss by Granderson. Boy, they featured a lot of hooks to Granderson. Now, Tori Labello, this is just talk about hot seat managing right now. It's a series now. It's not the one game set up like the wild card game. You've got to think about the series and how that's going to play out. Crowd here asking for a balk. Godley with an emphatic step off as that, that Turner was broke down the line. Tremendous reaction by Godley. I hate when runners do that. <laughs> I hate that. One and two the count on Granderson. They're trying to make me flinch. I can't stand that. You almost have to tiptoe into the stretch. Thank goodness he stepped that right foot stepped off. Here's a previous you pitch. You can kind of freeze, you know. Whoa. Yeah, he's good. That's legal. It's not smooth, but it's legal. I know. I mean, I'll tell you, it's <laughs> tougher than it looks when you're on the mound. I mean, you're concentrating on the hitter, and that guy's dogging you over there. Two and two to Granderson. Second and third for the Dodgers. And in the dirt, another good play back there by Mathis. It's a good thing because if Mathis has one bounce that he can't corral cleanly with Rosales playing so far off the bag at third Turner is halfway home on every pitch to score easily. He'll take as much as Rosales is off the bag equidistant. Trying to cover that hole with Granderson. Seven to one Los Angeles. Top five hitters in the Dodger batting order on point here tonight in game one. Granderson pulls it foul. So again, just put yourself in the manager's shoes right now. Tori Lovello, it's a series. You're trying to play through this. You've got in three of the next four games, you hope Robbie Ray and Zach Grinke. Probably Robbie Ray twice. Zach Grinke will get game three. You're matching up against Kershaw tonight. How much do you want to? burn your bullpen at this point. I mean did you think you were going to beat Kershaw and I sure you want to beat him but uh, they didn't have their best chance to do it. They've got 120 pitches in already in four innings. There's still a lot of game to play but you can understand why that bullpen is empty right now. Granderson on the ground right to Drury who makes the play to end the inning but the Dodgers bring eight to the plate lead it seven to one.
Friday night, Los Angeles, Chavez Ravine, home of the Dodgers. City's all a buzz, and 50,000 plus here at Dodger Stadium. First game of this National League Division Series. Dodger ace Clayton Kershaw is on the mound, pitching well. He's only given up the one run. That was an A.J. Pollock home run, which came with two outs in the third. Kershaw had a man on in the fourth, got a key double play in the fourth inning with the game still four to one. Then the Dodgers just scored three, bringing eight men to the plate. And now up six. Jeff Mathis leads the way. Looks like the pitcher Godley is going to hit. So Tori Lavello has made up his mind, at least for the short term. He's going to try to gobble up some innings with Godley and hit the reset button. With Kershaw doing his thing on the mound. Top hand coming off the bat rather quickly for Mathis because he's again coming back from a broken hand. His right hand dropped down a butt in the wild card game. He got a bun, had an RBI in the wild card game. Diamondbacks have never had more than one runner on at any time against Kershaw. Been a pretty comfortable outing for him as he gets Mathis to send one out to center field for the first out. How about this, guys? Since the live ball era, which goes back to Finisher. relatively up around 1920, minimum 1,500 innings pitched, ERAs. That's a big gap between first and second. I mean, that is huge. I mean, anybody had ever talked in the same sentence with Sandy Kopax, that was a no-no. But you, you got Kershaw. It, it is there's nothing like him. He's in his own league. And there's no reason not to put him right in that same picture. Kershaw led the National League in ERA for the fifth time this year. Ties a National League record. Five times leading the league in the air run average as he chops a hammer on Godley. He's just this is this is practice quarter. moment. Yeah. Like let me see if I've got this curveball again. Mm -hmm. Might as well. It's a pitcher. Pitcher at the plate. Throws him the lollipop. Might throw him another one. Nope. Throws Dennis, him a slider. When you when you think about the best pitchers in the game right now, and he, actually in recent history. Don't you find that most of them are guys that have good command and not just throw it by people but have can hit spots have a couple of different pitches they don't walk a lot of guys and and they're going to rack up strikeouts but they don't they don't live on the strikeout you don't punch guys out throwing strikes I mean you throw strike and then when you don't have to throw strike you have to practice that punch out pitch which is burying something mm -hmm. But you showed him you could throw a first strike and then you get out of that zone you know and then everybody and their brother is swinging at fastballs out of the zone nowadays right. everybody's trying to launch. But going back to Sandy didn't Sandy quit when he was 30 years old mm -hmm. right about the 30, same age as, as Kershaw is right a little, now a little bit older a little older mm -hmm. just a year or two older 12 years for Koufax. OK so he was in his 30s 1966 he finished. I think he won 25 games and then took a hike. Arthritic elbow. Yes. And what's a little scary for Kershaw is the fact that he continues to have back problems. It's been a chronic back injury that has shut him down each of the last two seasons for a while. Uh, bouncing ball to second base. Forsyth will take care of Godley. Kershaw with two away here in the fifth. Well, we can't come to Dodger Stadium without recognizing. The greatest to ever do it, Vin Scully, attending tonight's game and a great ovation as they introduced him earlier. We're sitting here in the Vin Scully press box, and Joe is sitting in Vin Scully's chair. Yeah, I was just going to say. Because Eck and I would have won no part of that seat. <laughs> the great Vin Scully. He actually saved it for me. <laughs> it's one of the, not only was he the greatest voice ever in sports broadcasting, but one of the greatest people. So generous with his time for everybody, including young broadcasters and players. And it was an honor to uh, watch the final season for Vince Scully last year and all the accolades and everything that people passed along to him. He was so embarrassed by it, but what a voice. I, I heard when he signed off in San Francisco. 
Seeger on the run over the shoulder runs Ooh. to the spot makes a catch. Nice play as he retires Peralta Kershaw with a three up three down fifth inning still 7-1. The 2017 National League Division Series is presented by T-Mobile, America's best unlimited network. Bases decked out in gold. Game one of the National League Division Series. Diamondbacks, Dodgers, two division rivals. Last division series to launch in 2017. Dodgers patiently waiting after finishing the season with 104 wins. Best record in all of baseball and as long as the Dodgers survive they will have the home field advantage all the way through the World Series if they make it that far. Grandal leads off for L.A. Godley back out there and a pop up on the first pitch. Marte wants it and there is out number one. Cannot stress how important these innings are for Zach Godley. One game leading to the next as you begin a series. And with every out, one fewer reliever that has to be used allows Tori Lovello, barring a big comeback here by Arizona, that allows crazy. Tori Lovello to pretend tomorrow has a game seven type feel, or because that's certainly one you have to go get with Robbie Ray on the mound, matching up against Rich Hill. Imagine if they played every day, no days off. That would be difficult. Right and to manage it's tough enough as it is sure thing right. It trying to save to, trying to save guys for tomorrow. Yeah. Forsyth at the plate a walk and a single here tonight. Godley entered in the second inning. Pitches in the playoffs just so much more stress to them. Every out mattering so much. And Godley, who has been a starter, certainly comfortable. That ball's hit well into center field, but it'll hang up for Pollock. Plays deep anyway and hardly has to move to make that play. 
Check in with Casey Stern. They're staying up late in Atlanta in the studio. What do you got, Casey? Right, number 22, Clayton Kershaw. All right, Casey, thanks. He's got uh, three in the studio with him, all with uh, Dodger ties. Gary Sheffield, Jimmy Rollins. There's Dodgers everywhere. We and got a guy right here. Joe was with yep. the Dodgers. But Pedro's Dodger story is my favorite one of all. Was, his brother Ramon was such a star here for the Dodgers. And Pedro got him back in a big way. Dodgers weren't sure. I love when Pedro tells the story, but <laughs> they said he was it's too better with Pedro telling. Too wasn't small. Last. Yeah, I figured he he's not as as big as his brother. There was another Martinez brother that I saw coming up through the minor leagues, Jesus, the younger brother, left-handed. He was nasty too. The pitching Martinez is a little flare, gonna fall. Kershaw with a base hit. One of the better hitting pitchers in the National League, and he delivers with a single with two outs to turn the lineup over. Just a little uh, drop shot. <laughs> that wasn't even a strike. Chris Taylor. <laughs> Whatever it takes. It's not pretty. I don't know if I want to be on the bases right now, seven to one. Trudging around the bases. <laughs> Come on, Eck. These are finally two I athletes on the bases right now. <laughs> Here's Taylor back to the top of the batting order for Los Angeles. Speaking of athletes, how about the fact that he and Matthew Stafford played together in high school? Clayton Kershaw in the same same high school, mm -hmm. Highland Park High School Highland in Park. Dallas. Yep. Both Kershaw make. was the center. Stafford, the quarterback. And both the most highly paid players in their respective sports and they were teammates in high school. Yeah, big iron you're talking 30 beans <laughs> yeah. each right. Yeah there they are. Stafford and Kershaw. Kershaw holding up the trophy. Little chubby boy huh? <laughs> already in the already in their Dodgers unis. <laughs> yeah nice. That's why he was the center. <laughs> Taylor fouls it away. Yeah it's a it's a well he discussed and talked about story but to have two guys as elite as Stafford and Kershaw coming from one high school. He's a big dude man. You get up next to him. My goodness. He's listed at similar numbers as Taiwan Walker. 6 4 2 30. Oh. One of the greatest competitors to ever. Toe the rubber. Taylor takes a ball low. You play with guys like that Joe you can't talk to him. Starter starting pitchers. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I wasn't that geared up. I mean, I wouldn't talk during the game on the bench, even if I was going good. I'd get carried away. Mm -hmm. If I was standing in the outfield and I saw you, I couldn't say hello. <laughs> oh, yeah, you could say hello to me. What's that? <laughs> Taylor takes a ball. If you're on my team? Yeah. Oh, sure. sure. Okay. <laughs> maybe Eck, you should have been a little more focused as a starter. I was and man. then maybe he never would have I just ran out of, I ran out of gas is what <laughs> happens man save your energy speaking of focus that brain never turns off Zach Grinke always talking about the game thinking about the game Kershaw takes off on a 3 2 and did he go he did Taylor strikes out. And a little success finally for the Diamondbacks against one of the top five hitters in this Dodger lineup. All right, it's time for our cap shuffle presented by a new era.
Let's take a look at StatCast, powered by Amazon Web Services. The first pitch swing of A.J. Pollock and a home run in the third inning. Hit at 410 feet. Fans have a good time with this. Watch this, folks. He's like, oh, hold it there, man. I'm going to take a shot. And the lady in the back says, no, throw that thing away. He never got the picture. And he lost the baseball. That's a playoff baseball right there. Rob Manfred special. The other team hit it. Yeah, right? So. No, you don't want that on your no. shelf. I'm taking that home. Unless I'm at Wrigley. Everywhere else, I'm taking that home. Oh, Wrigley, they'd have fought you for it. Mm -hmm. No, they bring a dummy ball. See, that's a difference. Oh, yeah. yeah mm -hmm. right. Kershaw back to work, and Pollock leads off. And Kershaw starts him with a curveball this time. Pollock's getting the power back, Joe. This is a guy that. With all the injuries he's dealt with, the injury last year, the broken elbow, only played 12 games last year. He missed seven weeks this season with a groin injury. He's out from mid May to the 4th of July. So his first 300 or so at bats, Pollock hit just five homers. And leading up to this postseason, in his final 119 at bats, had nine home runs. Terrific player that they've just got to figure out a way to keep him on the diamond, keep him healthy. Great athlete, man. He can run. Power. Gold glove center fielder. Figures to play a key role in this series. Had a couple of hits in the wild card game, including a decisive triple in the eighth inning that stretched the lead to three. That was after Archie Bradley's triple that opened up the waters briefly and then Colorado coming right back with a couple of runs back to back homers and Pollock had that triple one of the four triples in the game in the wild card game and by the way congratulations to the Colorado Rockies Absolutely. disappointing finish but what a year for Bud Black yeah what a turnaround for both these clubs Arizona and Colorado first year in Colorado for Bud Black first time of the postseason and uh, they are a team to be reckoned with for a while, you would imagine. Kershaw walks Pollock. A leadoff walk here in the sixth inning. Dave Roberts calls Bud Black his greatest mentor. He is the guy, when he manages a game, the voice in his head most often is Bud Black's voice. From his time with Bud Black in San Diego as a coach, ultimately the bench coach. Here's Goldschmidt now. Diamondbacks need something to hang their hat on. Facing Kershaw here in the sixth inning, down six. And a strike on the outer half. Well, he's throwing him some fastballs he took. He puts out on a fastball for looking first time up. Flew out last time and then takes a fastball right there. Another one. Coming inside this time. And misses in. He has a very uh, mostly upright, erect stance. Knees are bent a little bit, but then as the pitch is about to be delivered, even though the bat starts parallel to the ground, he goes into a more conventional uh, start with his bat. Gets the bat more upright and then really dives into the plate. And Kershaw trying to nibble on the edge. Misses two balls and a strike. Goldschmidt is truly one of the greats in the game. Diamondbacks have been out of the playoff picture since 2011, which was Goldschmidt's rookie year. It's not that he doesn't get the accolades inside the game, but he is not the most recognizable player in Major League Baseball, not necessarily in that group. He is certainly the face of the Diamondbacks. So it's a bullet to third. Turner's got it. Out at second. And a double play for the Dodgers. Kershaw gets another one. Second turn behind him tonight. This time the Dodgers go around the horn. He gets a, hits a bullet here. Goldschmidt gets a fastball. Trying to get this ball in. He turns on it. One hop to Turner. That's a beautiful thing. Once again, two double play balls for Kershaw on this game. Fastball, he's right on it. Not that tough. The ball slowed down on the grass, so made it look easy, and they turned it. That was TBS Total Motion presented by Progressive. 5 4 3 double play wipes out the leadoff walk. And here is JD Martinez now. You know, every time you watch Kershaw pitch, it's. it's 
you know you can't teach this deception his deception is just incredible then you think about his back problems and you wonder you know going forward how you know how, how old he is going to be 30 had some back trouble this year and then you watch him pitch and that is not an easy thing to do what he does with his body big curve launched down the left field line that is way back and it is a fair ball home run for J.D. Martinez a mile high and Martinez on the board with a postseason home run. Boy, in a ball foul, first time up. A curveball that went foul. I thought it might have been a double. Well, been 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 and that double play looming very large right now. Oh, yeah. Look at this curveball. Catches too much of the plate. Look at this swing. This watch, guy. Watch him keep his hands back here, though, after he got his foot down. Sticks his nose in there. Mm -hmm. Keeps it fair. Dropped the barrel on it. That guy's incredible. He lit up the National League West once he was traded from the Tigers. Martinez, in only 39 games, hit more homers against the division than any other player. He had 19 home runs in 39 games against his own division. <laughs> player of the month in September in the National League. You anyway. talk about a guy that's going to make some iron. Oh my goodness. <laughs> He Time. wants that ball to go foul, but it. That was the other <laughs> impressive thing about Martinez, which we saw 2014. Remember Joe Tigers Orioles when Martinez launched a couple of home runs in that series. His ability to keep the ball fair down the line. Yeah, on pitches in on him, and that was a slow breaking ball, but he still stayed back on it. But like Goldschmidt, he just dives into the plate. He's got great power to the opposite field as well. Like he's Goldschmidt. Only, he's only faced uh, Kershaw 11 times. Now he's got two jacks. Yeah, and you think about his career path and how Houston had him and traded him to the Tigers, or actually the Tigers kind of picked him up. Right. Yeah, they stole him. him from Arizona. Yeah. I mean, uh, the Astros yeah. to begin with. Right. There is a theme in Major League Baseball with a lot of players these days. Players who have changed the arc of their career. It's Kershaw wanted that one. Pitch number four just missed down and away to Drury. I see everybody get a little antsy there when you, you throw a strike. You got to have it. Two solo homers against Kershaw. Dave Roberts has his ace and a comfortable lead here in the sixth inning. If there is such a thing in the postseason. Drury out in front. Kershaw. With the hammer. A strikeout to end the inning, but a home run by Martinez makes it a five run game.
Back in Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles. Zach Godley back to work for the Arizona Diamondbacks. He's been out there since the second inning. Dodgers scored four runs on four hits and a couple of walks in the first off Taiwan Walker. And Godley is giving them a terrific effort out of the pen as Seeger bounces to second base, hit it hard. But right at Drury for the first out of the inning. Here comes Justin Turner now. He's been the star tonight. Four RBIs, three run homer, and an RBI single in the fourth inning. Last Dodger with four ribbies in a postseason game was James Loney. That was back on October 1st of 2008 against the Cubs at a grand slam in that game, did Loney. Dodger record for RBIs in a postseason game is five. Pedro Guerrero and Davey Lopes each had five RBIs for the Dodgers. Guerrero did it in the World Series in 81 against the Yankees. Who's co-MVP that year? Three of them, weren't there? Jaeger and somebody Say. else, right? Say, was mm -hmm. it that us? That year right there. Justin Turner wears that number 10. Pay homage to Ron Say, the Penguin. The Penguin. I play with the Penguin a couple years in Chicago. Southern California kid right here, Justin he had, Turner. Penguin had no kitchen, never short arms. <laughs> yeah, he did <laughs> not. No, meaning you can't pitch him inside. You is got what it. Translated. Uh -huh. yeah. The Eck Dictionary. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> no kitchen. <laughs> right. Two and one to Turner. What a start to his postseason this season. And a wave and a miss. Two and two the count. That was the pitch Godley was trying to get him on last time up. Yeah, Turner. Ron says number 10 looks good. The way that beard's going right now, it could go all the way up mm -hmm. to the eyeballs at some point. <laughs> I say this for Godley. Good for him. He hadn't quit throwing that curveball. Yeah, he's got a good one, but he, he was getting those ground balls and they were they were finding holes or he was his own worst enemy when he tried to pick that one over, pick that one up over at first base. But he hasn't stopped throwing it. Dodgers scored three in the fourth. After a four run first, Ron Gardenhire, the bench coach, have a chat with the manager, former Twins manager. He's had a number, number of games managed in the postseason with the Minnesota Twins. Twins knocked out of the wild card game by the Yankees. Congratulations to Paul Molitor and the Twins on a successful season this year, returning to the postseason. Now, everybody kept thinking the Twins would fade, and they didn't for them. Turner into center field. That's it on the barrel. Back is Pollock at the track. He's got it for the out. Well, it's not your daddy's game show. It is Snoop Dogg, and he presents <laughs> the Joker's <laughs> Wild October 24th, 10 p.m. on TBS. Cody Bellinger with two away. Bellinger's first postseason at bat had a single. Base hit to center field. He scored a run. Reached on an error his last time up. Bellinger more than likely going to be the rookie of the year without a doubt. Seeger won it last year, right? They thought they won. Yeah. The Dodgers are <laughs> rookie of the year is just coming out of the wazoo. Cornered the market. Including the first one, Jackie Robinson, 1947, the greatest one. Don Newcomb was the rookie of the year. He threw out the first pitch here tonight. Great to see Don Newcomb at 91 years of age. Rookie of the year, Cy Young Award winner, MVP. Part of that Brooklyn Dodgers World Series championship team. Dim Bums, 55. Made a, made a nice pitch, too. A lot better than X first pitch <laughs> in Oakland this year. <laughs> I'm glad that nobody's got that video. <laughs> oh, we got it. <laughs> Bellinger oh, with a big swing. One and two the count. Before the ball game today, got huge ovation. Don Newcomb still a special advisor 
to the chairman of the Dodgers, Kenley Jansen, fitting that he would catch that ceremonial first pitch. I thought he was the first Cy Young. Am I, am I wrong there? Remember the Cy Young did, didn't start till uh, but late. I think, I, right? think it, I think there was only one okay. in those days too for Maybe both the, leagues. Both leagues, 55. Okay, he was in, he's in great shape. Said he was torn between the curveball and the changeup today. Wasn't quite <laughs> sure. Godley with two outs, two and two the count on Bellinger. And that one misses inside. That's Cy Young for Newcomb was 56. Year after they won the World Series, breaking through in Brooklyn. Also on the MVP that year. Great history here. They've done a terrific job at Dodger Stadium recognizing that history with all of the awards and walking through the hallways down near the clubhouses. It's a special place. I mean, they've got all the gold gloves lined up, a lot of the artifacts. It's like playing homage to, to the Dodgers. It's eerie. Fly ball into shallow right center. Pollock will make the play, and that will retire the side. All Dodgers tonight. See if the Diamondbacks have something left. The great Don Newcomb got us started in this NLDS. Take a look at the upcoming MLB postseason schedule. We got Cubs Nationals game two, followed by our game two here at Dodger Stadium. Coverage starts at 4.30 p.m. with the MLB postseason pregame show on TBS, presented by Alpha Romeo. 7 to 2, Dodgers have the lead. Clayton Kershaw rolling right along here in game one of this NLDS. Adam Rosales leading the way for Arizona. Rosales reaching on an air in the second inning. He walked in the fourth. And a line shot to center field, but right at the center fielder, Taylor. 
And out number one. Well, this is kind of a borderline inning for Clayton Kershaw in the postseason. Talked about his lack of success in the postseason in his career. But see, innings one through six, very respectable. Innings seven plus, it jumps to 16 and 0.88. So they'll keep a close eye on him going forward. Uh, Lauren Shahadi is down near the Dodger dugout. Lauren, we see the Dodger bullpen active right now. What were you able to glean from Dave Roberts last inning? Yeah, Brian, I just saw Dave Roberts shrug his shoulders. I asked, what's on your mind? He said, I'm just thinking if Kershaw gets into trouble, who to go to? He said he wants to keep their lefties on the bench, so it would be a left-handed reliever if need be. Nice. And three left-handed relievers are technically available. Alex Wood is obviously Going to, going to try to be saved uh, for a game four scenario. So you have Tony Watson and Tony Sangrani. Good work by Lauren getting the deep thoughts of De Dave Roberts in the middle of a game. That's hard to do. That's yeah. big time. Yeah, it's <laughs> really. I don't blame Dave Roberts for wanting to keep some of those big bats out of the picture. I'm guessing specifically Jake Lamb is the guy he would rather not sure. get any at bats in this division series. And if sure. it's going to be an at bat, it's going to be against a left handed pitcher. Well 97 pitches was the pitch count high for Kershaw after he came back from the disabled list and he's sitting on 97 right now. And all those guys on the bench what are they looking at? they're looking to see who's warming up in the bullpen <laughs> and what does he feature going to the notes. See those pitch boxes. It's Kershaw yes, he did. did he get a swing no he's oh. able to check it. Marte and all those guys on the bench that I saw were left handed Descalso Blanco Lamb. I thought he went from the other view but he held it up. Mesmerized by the shoes get you a take every time. Pitch number ninety nine for Kershaw and a shot down the left field line that's a hot one and it's out of here. A line drive bullet of a home run by Cattell Marte. The third solo homer of the game. Screws tighten a little bit here at Dodger Stadium. It is seven to three now. And Marte with his three hits and two triples in the wild card game is racking up the total bases right now. You talked about it's like turning into a pumpkin. Mm -hmm. They're close to 100 pitches and in the postseason, but this is a slider and he rifles this thing. Right out of here. Boy, is that quick, wasn't it? I mean, my goodness, you're talking about three solo home runs, and all of them were crushed. Marte on the board with his first postseason homer. Now that one is sent deep to left field. Mathis goes out of here. The unlikeliest of power hitters at the bottom of this order. Cattell Marte and Jeff Mathis. Back to back solo home runs, seven to four. The wheels Dodgers. are turning. The wheels are turning. I mean, this is a shocker. Mathis with the, with the hand injury and all that. He was 0 for 18 this year against the Dodgers. Kershaw can't believe it. And Dave Roberts is on his way out. And he has made a quick call to the bullpen. So the end of the line for Kershaw. Six and a third. He'll get a big hand on his way out. Got a chance to win for the first time in his career at home at Dodger Stadium.
This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Office of the Commissioner of Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. Clayton Kershaw out of the game, six and a third innings here tonight, giving up back-to-back -back home runs to the bottom of the Diamondbacks order. Rick Honeycutt cautiously easing his way in to have a chat with Kershaw. Yeah, Rick needs to maintain a, an athletic stance in case he has to bolt. Yeah. Well, he, will, he will exit with a lead. It is a 7-4 lead, the Dodgers' best bullpen ERA in the National League this season, but this is a game again here in the seventh inning. Two runs are in. Back-to-back -back home runs from Marte and Mathis. And now Dave Roberts, as he told Lauren, is going to go with the left-hander, Tony Watson. I love this guy. Really tough on lefties. Sidearm delivery. Christian Walker will bat for Arizona. We saw him with a bat in his hands in the second inning, ready mm -hmm. to pinch hit. If the pitcher spot came up, here he is finally getting a chance. Here you got the Watson here over from, from Pittsburgh. You see what he's done. Fastball 93, slider changeup. Christian Walker's a good story. Talk about rags to riches for this guy. And he shoots one to right, a base hit for Walker. He was claimed off waivers from the Reds by the Diamondbacks. He went to the Coast League and was the MVP of the Pacific Coast League. Hit 32 home runs, drove in 114, and now he's in the postseason. That's a big hit. His first line drive single to right. Top of the order now for Arizona. David Peralta. Dodgers have Brandon Morrow, their setup man now, getting ready in the bullpen. Could be Watson's last hitter if Peralta should reach. Peralta's well, you, 0 for 2 with a walk. You know they're going to extend guys in bullpen. You see Morrow, really a one-inning guy, but they'll extend him as well as Jansen. Only one out here in the seventh. Dodgers eight outs away. Bouncing ball up the middle. Seager Rage is over. Makes the play for the out. Peralta is retired. Second out of the inning. Diamondbacks have a runner in scoring position now. Don't forget, head over to TBS Facebook right now and Twitter right now to watch the bottom of the seventh inning live with Casey, Chef, Pedro, and Jimmy Rollins. J. Roll. Watson will face A.J. Pollock now. Pollock with that. First pitch yeah, swing on Kershaw in the, in the third inning, hit the home run, and now the manager is on his way out to play matchup. Yeah, I, I said, wait a minute here. You can't let Watson face Pollock. And Roberts makes a call to the bullpen. Pitching change at Dodger Stadium. Right now, the tying run is on deck for Arizona. Here comes Morrow.
MLB postseason on TBS, game one of this National League Division Series, Dodgers-Diamondbacks. Dodgers had a comfortable lead with Kershaw on the mound, but Arizona has fought their way back with a couple of unlikely sources. Marte and Mathis go back to back, Kershaw six and a third. It is a three-run game now, and Dave Roberts goes with his setup man, his new setup man as of late, Brandon Morrow, who is making his postseason debut after 11 years in the big leagues. What a story. I tell you what, what a gift for the, the Dodgers, what he's done this year. He can bring it, man. High 90s, little cutter slider when he wants to take something off, but hard stuff. Stellar numbers this year for Morrow. A starter with the Toronto Blue Jays, spent some time with the Mariners, has found a new role as a high leverage late game reliever with the Dodgers. Morrow facing A.J. Pollock. Goldschmidt on deck for Arizona as Pollock swings at the first pitch. A high fly ball to center field. And that will snuff out the rally. Morrow comes in, one pitch, inning over. Stretch time at Dodger Stadium. Brand new ball game. Tonight's game summary presented by Geico and Joe. The theme of no lead is safe continues in our series here in L.A. Yeah, it's been amazing in all the games. The Dodgers jumped out in the first thing, that three-run homer from Justin Turner and knocked Taiwan Walker out of the ball game. But a great job by Zach Godley so far. He did give up three in the fourth, but a, a good comeback again by this time by the Diamondbacks. Diamondbacks hit four home runs off. Clayton Kershaw, new pitcher for Arizona's David Hernandez. And to try to keep it right there. This guy used to throw a lot harder than he does now, but low 90s fastball, curveball, slider. Started his year with the Angels. Just down the road. Puig leads off, base hit. Down into the corner it goes. And extra bases for Yasiel Puig, who's thinking about third, and he's on his way. Throw comes in. Puig belly flop. He is in there.
Is that exciting or what? He had to exactly, he had to get out of the box to get the curve, excuse me, the slider that he hooks down the line just fair. Right down the line, and he's thinking out of the box, I'm going to get two for sure, but he had to get it coming around second base. This was risky, but it, it paid off. Headlong dive. He's just in there. Oh, my goodness. That's a tongue wag that Michael Jordan would appreciate. Well, he's a right fielder. He knows how difficult the corners are to play here at Dodger Stadium down the lines for any outfielder, and he took advantage, got an extra base. Here's Curtis Granderson, a wave and a miss. We're talking about all those triples in Arizona. We get one tonight. That's not an easy thing to do. No. Puig had just two triples all year during the regular season. After the Diamondbacks score twice in the seventh, Dodgers looking for a quick answer. They lead by three. Granderson with the infield in. And Hernandez misses way inside, almost drilled him. I don't know how it missed him. Puig is such an exciting player, and you know that when he starts running, he really just kind of runs until you tag him. Yes. So yeah. he was going to just keep going. The play was in front of him. He saw it. Yeah. And a swing and a foul by Granderson. Puig had been hitting eighth most of the year, and to great success for Dave Roberts, put him in a spot in the batting order where he didn't feel some of the burden of the lineup. But as we enter the postseason, Roberts said, I need a number five hitter. I need a run producer. And Puig has had a terrific night in the first playoff game of the year for him. You know, I thought Puig had a great at bat the first time up. Uh -huh. Remember three and two, he fouled off a ball. Uh -huh. but at the end of his bat, I mean, he, he, that was one of the best at bats he could have. And then he had a double off the wall. And then that time up, he swings at the first pitch. Break a ball, snaps it down the line. Well, like I said, if he gets a hit his first couple of times up, and he did get one, as you said, his first time up, you better, you better try to figure out a way for him not to beat you. Two and two to Granderson. And back inside goes Hernandez. Granderson hit the ball sharply his last time up. He rolled out to second. First two times up, he struck out. Diamondbacks can ill afford to give up any more. They've been trying to climb the Kershaw Mountain. Have chased the Dodgers ace from the game with one out in the seventh inning. But now Los Angeles immediately puts up a threat and Mike Butcher on the phone to the bullpen to get some activity down there. Well one of the biggest jobs of anybody out of the bullpen is a shutdown inning after your team closed the gap. Hernandez needs a strikeout here and Granderson lifts it in the air shallow and winding it up is Peralta who's got a cannon a former pitcher and Puig does not test the arm of David Peralta. Don't you know it they did they know because if anybody else you'd take a chance right there. You see the triple down the line once again breaking ball snaps it down the line. And him coming around third base, he sees everything happening, but it's a close play. This is a Rosales let the ball come to him and then the tongue. TBS Total Motion presented by Progressive. <laughs> Dick <laughs> Roberts was already thinking yeah. that's a double. It, it was a double, off. yeah. He looks up, says, no, no, yeah. wait, okay, great. Good he job. Was, he was trying to get Granderson's attention about how to get him over, even to bunt. Last year when Yasiel Pui got sent down to AAA, it was one of the firmest statements a manager made about a player. I asked Dave late in the year last year, how's your roster set for the postseason? He goes, our roster set, and it didn't include Yasiel Pui. He ended up coming back, and he was on the playoff roster. But at that time, in early September, that was not the case. He's had a great turnaround, Yasiel Pui. I think he tests his arm with one out. Peralta yeah. made a nice, did a nice job of getting himself in a good fundamental position to make that throw too. Caught it over his throwing arm, throwing shoulder. Grandall lifts one in the air, shallow center. We might get some action here. 
Pollock is very shallow, makes the catch, and Puig starts, then stops. And a wise move. Thought he might test it. I'm with you. I thought that might be the one you give a shot. And a nice play, nice smart move by Mathis to come out and smother that short hop before he had to fight it off. Oh, man, that would have been a tough pick. Yeah, he would have stayed back had Puig tried to score. You're right. He would have tried to pick it. But running the risk of the final out at home plate with a lead. So now two men are out. But what an escape this would be for Hernandez. Well, Hernandez throwing the ball hard tonight, too. Up to 95. Going to give him credit up to this point. Getting out of this thing is a big out. Logan Forsythe at the plate. First ball swinging. Rosales bobbles, recovers. Throw is dug out by Goldschmidt. Woo. Woo. And the inning is over. That one had disaster written all over it. But the Diamondbacks survive a leadoff triple by Puig. Rosales wrestling an alligator over there. The gold glover at first with the pick. To the eighth we go. Dave Roberts tightens up his defense. Kike Hernandez will enter the game for Curtis Granderson. And Brandon Morrow continues for the Dodgers on the mound. Don't forget Bleacher Report connects you to the teams, players, moments that matter in sports culture. Download the free Bleacher Report app. Stay dialed in to the MLB playoffs. Packed house here at Dodger Stadium. 50,000 plus. Goldschmidt leads off. First ball swinging a pop-up. Bellinger's got it and a big out for Morrow and at 98 I don't care if you are a good high ball hitter like Goldschmidt is and that was a high fastball it's just so hard to get on top of that yeah both he and Pollock first pitch swinging both fastballs this guy's got some gas huh doesn't he Ugh. Goldschmidt had pretty good numbers against Morrow as well he had homered off him was four for eight against Morrow. Matter of fact, the Diamondbacks as a team, a very high batting average during the regular year against Brandon Morrow, a 438 team average against his pitcher. 
He's thrown two pitches and gotten two outs though. His third pitch misses down and in at 98 miles an hour to J.D. Martinez. One of the big question marks was how would Dave Roberts get his bullpen to bridge between the starting pitchers and Kenley Jansen. Pedro Baez had a horrible last mm -hmm. month of the season. He had been the setup guy. Baez, Baez did make the ball club. That but right there. Pitch in a leverage inning according to Dave Roberts. And that that is hair and that that ball was brought. He just turns his you know turns gathers his, he turns his uh -huh, hip a little bit uh -huh. and I mean to tell you he lets it go. J.D. Martinez will half swing. They'll ask. He checks it. 99. Morrow has been on a great run for the Dodgers in that eighth inning role. He has not allowed an extra base hit to 126 consecutive batters now. Moving into the postseason. Little flare in the infield. On a hop, Forsythe can't make the play. Martinez will reach. Forsythe really made no effort to catch that in the air. But that's was the strangest thing you ever seen, huh? A jam shot? Yeah, and because you don't know what the spin's going to do to the baseball, you're taking a big chance of letting it drop. J.D. Martinez, one of the slowest runners the Diamondbacks have, but that is a huge risk, and Forsythe has it bite him. Remember, he started this game over Utley for his defense. That ball bit is what happened. Yeah. It bit a little bit in the grass. It's one of the ugliest hits you're going to see. That'll be an infield hit for Martinez. Diamondbacks again put the tying run on deck with Martinez on. One away. Brandon Drury at the plate for Arizona. Ground ball. Seeger's there, steps on the back, fire to first, and a double play! Corey Seeger patiently waiting. Brandon Morrow, four big outs for the Dodgers.
take a look at tonight's cars.com five tool play of the game. Justin Turner first inning before Taiwan Walker had recorded an out a three run home run and the Dodgers with a four run first off with a bang here tonight Turner with his third postseason homer get the car shopping tools you need at cars.com David Hernandez went out to warm up once Chase Utley was announced as the pinch hitter Tori Lovello is going to make a counter move now back to the bullpen go the Diamondbacks Andrew Chafin is on the pitch 7-4 Dodgers lead it we play in the bottom of the eighth Upcoming MLB postseason schedule, Cubs, Nats, game two tomorrow, followed by our game two here at Dodger Stadium, Diamondbacks, Dodgers. Don't forget, 4.30, coverage begins with MLB postseason pregame show on TBS, presented by Alfa Romeo. A lot of managerial maneuvering. Utley was uh, sent out, announced as a pinch hitter, sent right back as Tori Lovello counters with the left-hander Chafin, which means... Dave Roberts counters with his right-handed bat, Austin Barnes. And the numbers on Chafin. Eh? Chafin, 71 games. Just a lot of short stints, only 51 innings. Fastball 93, a lot of sliders. And this is all before we began the eighth inning, all that maneuvering. Something you might see in the middle of an inning, but with the pitcher spot at the plate. And the wheels in motion. So Barnes, one of the three catchers on the postseason roster for the Dodgers. And Los Angeles carrying that third catcher for this exact reason. Kyle Farmer is the third catcher on this ball club. So Dave Roberts can use Austin Barnes. Or if Barnes gets the start, so he then can use Grandall. Chapin at times. A little bit of a mystery to Tori Lovello because some days you'll come in and blow people away, and other times you'll come in and have trouble finding the strike zone. But like X said, he throws hard, throws in the third base side of the rubber, crosses his body a little. In the right field, a base hit for Barnes. This kid just keeps on hitting for the Dodgers. Went from a third catcher to a backup. Now in a platoon, you'll likely see him in the starting lineup tomorrow with Rich Hill on the mound. Yeah, not trying to get big right there. Gets a fastball away. Just darts this thing into right field. Keeps his head down. Gets the ball the other way. Beautiful thing. One hitter. Diamondbacks were down 7-2. to two. Chase Kershaw. Got two runs in the seventh, a three-run game, and Lavello goes back to his bullpen as the Dodgers get back to the top of their order. New pitcher coming in for Arizona, Jimmy Scherfe.
the 2017 National League Division Series is presented by T-Mobile. Friday night, Los Angeles, California. And the beautiful Dodger Stadium. It is loud once again. Dodgers fans sensing a potential late rally. Jimmy Scherfe making his postseason debut and trying to quiet this down and give his offense a chance to come back. He has been fantastic for the Arizona Diamondbacks. A bit of a surprise down the stretch. Act. Yeah, he didn't give up anything when he came up. Then he got hurt, but he's back. He's Ten and two third innings of nothing. You talk about a fastball, 93 to 95, and a curveball. Likes to throw his curveball more than his fastball. Triple A closer, longtime friend of the Lavello family. Sherfy and Tori's son Nick were teammates. Now Nick in the Red Sox organization. These two go way back. The manager. And his reliever in his postseason debut. Novello gives him the ball with a runner at first. Austin Barnes, the base runner. Sure, if he had a little bit of tricep tendonitis problems too late in the season. Well, he's only in 11 games. Spent that time coming back from that injury at Instructional League in Arizona with the Diamondbacks. Been a while since he's been on a big league mound. And a first pitch breaking ball right off the end of the bat. Goldsmith is there. And he'll take care of Chris Taylor for out number one. <laughs> Sheriff, he wasn't going to make the same mistake that <laughs> Godley made. How do you get two ground balls in the same spot in one game? <laughs> he said, I've seen this before, and I'm getting out of here. Once again, nasty breaking ball. Not very hit very hard, but they, they got it out. <laughs> Look at this thing. It's, got, it's spinning, too. Look at that thing. It looked like, looked like Goldsmith was. I thought Goldschmidt was going to box him out, too. He was not going to allow him to get there. Runner does advance. Works like a bunt. Barnes at second base with one away. Corey Seager at the plate. And another breaking ball from Scherfe. Back-to-back -back spinners. Gets ahead of Seager. Kind of a three-quarter curve ball not straight down got a little bite to it though you got to throw this guy something other than a fastball on the first pitch you can throw a fastball just don't throw it for a strike maybe a swing at it we'll hit that change up first pitch Ooh. off mm -hmm. godly that was a big hit of the game that really was that was in the fourth inning an RBI single for Seeger who lashes away at that one and it's quickly 0 2 that's a good spot for the fastball though tied him up in there I don't think he meant to go in there Yeah, you can tie him up. Crowd him a little bit in there. Sure, if he would just 11 big league games on his register as he works at his first postseason game. Delivers a breaking ball. Heck of a play back there by Mathis. Wow, he really moves well. He does. He can block some curveballs. That was his put away curveball that he just. Spiked. Doesn't even get to the plate. Look at this thing. Mm. Textbook. Yes, absolutely. The ball goes to the right on him a little bit, but just off his chest. Beautiful thing. Yeah, with, with one out, that's a key play. Right off his Mizuno. Scherfe with a runner at second. Barnes, and he'll take a peek. Scherfe had 20 saves in AAA. He saved 30 last year in three levels of the Diamondbacks organization. High A ball all the way up to triple A. 30 saves in a season. That is rare in the minor leagues. Pitched so well. He pitched his way onto this postseason roster. One, two, and a swing and a shot. Pass Goldschmidt down into the corner. In the score is Barnes. And Seeger on his way to third. Throw comes in. It's a triple. RBI triple, and it's eight to four. That's what happens when you throw a curveball in the dirt. You make a little adjustment, and you throw it for a strike. And, and that's in his happy zone. He yanks that ball down the right field line. 
just not his best curveball by Goldschmidt. He hit it so hard. A, a little bit of a slow reaction here by yeah. by on the read by Goldschmidt. The, he didn't hit the ground real quick to try to knock that down, and he's an outstanding first baseman. He must not have picked that ball up right yeah. away. That's a good call there. He just didn't go directly into his uh, headlong dive. Yeah. Diamondbacks have been able to keep the Dodgers off the pay station the last three innings. Now they have scored again back to a four run lead. Here's Turner with the infield in and he shoots one right through base hit. Another run is in and another RBI for Justin Turner. How about five ribbies in game one. Well I thought he'd be sitting on a breaking ball. Maybe he was. I don't know because he got the fastball and just fought it off. All you got to do is make contact. 94 fastball too. Just wasn't trying to do too much. He wasn't trying to hit the ball out of the ballpark. Right. Just make contact and hit a bullet. Breathing room for the and, Dodgers. Add on runs, boy. They just are crushers when you've got an offense like Arizona has that tries to come back and you can't stop the other team. What a night for Turner. Ties a Dodger franchise record for RBIs in a postseason game. The other two happened in a World Series. Pedro Guerrero in 81 against the Yankees. Davey Lopes in 78 against the Yankees. And now Justin Turner, game one of the NLDS. Three for four, a walk, and five RBIs. Bellinger now. Well, I tell you, you make a mistake. Seeger hits a ball down line. That ball hits before he just was nasty breaking ball in the dirt. It's the big leagues, man. It's hard to get away with a mistake. Big swing by Bellinger. It's a small sample size, but that's all Tori Lovello has to go on. One thing he liked about Scherfe, it put him into some hot situations. Had a two inning save against the Rockies. His first and only big league save. He had 10 at bats, 10 batters faced with a runner in scoring position. They were 0 for 10 against him in that small sample size. That's the first time in the big leagues he's given up a run with a runner in scoring position. But as Egg mentioned, he has not pitched on a big league mound in a while, albeit a playoff game. Still a lot of pressure on a kid when you haven't been on a big league mound. I'm guessing a little bit different scene in instructional league. Oh, Salt <laughs> River Field, right? Yeah. <laughs> Sheriffy with a runner at first. One man out in the inning. And Bellinger pops it foul out of play. I mean, there's nothing like this playoff. Experience you talk about Taiwan Walker, what he went through this first inning. I'll tell you, that's hard. I mean, for a kid to come up here 25 years old, had a bad first inning. You know, you just pack it off to experience. And this for Scherfe here, I mean, this kid's been uptight since he got to the big leagues. It hats off to a kid like this. Bellinger pops it foul again. Another off speed offering from Sherfy and Mathis is on his way to the mound. Game two right back here tomorrow. Robbie Ray for the Diamondbacks the Dodger killer this year against Rich Hill. Move to the game two start bumping you Darvish back to the game three start at Chase Field in Arizona. Two balls, two strikes. Turner at first. And a swing and a miss. Scherfe picks up the strikeout for the second out. And here comes Yasiel Puig. With two away. 
Zach Godley going five innings. The fifth starter, Robbie Ray, after his bullpen effort in the wild card game, Eck will get game two. And if it goes to five, you would certainly think Robbie Ray, barring injury, would be available for that game as well. What a year that kid has had. Oh, my goodness. You look at those two guys' numbers, you figure for it'll be a low scoring game, but there haven't been any low scoring games in the postseason so far. Starting pitchers beware in the postseason of 2017. ERA over six combined for starters. That was way in, almost drilled Puig again. He's taken a few inside. Yeah, that's the third one. Had a foul ball earlier in this game that hit the knob of the bat right under the hand. One that almost grazed his knuckles in his first at bat. Weeks had a good night. Two hits, two RBIs, including a triple. Big hack there, and it's a ball and a strike on Puig. Tell you who else had a good night. It's Paul Nauert behind the plate. He's done a fine job, balls and strikes this evening. Been Gets a couple overlooked sometimes, doesn't uh -huh. it? There, I'll tell you, this kid's <laughs> got some life to that gas of his. Yasiel Puig is not agreeing with your assessment right now, Joe. But the umpire jinx on him. <laughs> He's got one left. <laughs> one ball, two strikes. Two outs in the Dodger eighth, and Puig in the air to left center. Playable. And Peralta puts it away. And the inning is over. However, Justin Turner delivers once again. Five RBIs. Dodgers get two more. And they lead it nine to four. What a night for Red.
Familiar sounds of Kenley Jansen entering the game here at Dodger Stadium trying to shut this one down. Nine to four Los Angeles one of the great closers in the game. Forty one saves this year a minuscule earned run average and a massive strikeout to walk ratio. Fifteen and a half strikeouts per walk for Jansen. He starts Gregor Blanco the pinch hitter with strike one. This is the cutter man. Nothing but cutters 90 percent of the time cutter goes from about 91 to 95. Gregor Blanco off the bench hitting for Adam Rosales. And in the air to center field shallow Taylor is there. Out number one for Jansen. Don't forget Casey Stern and company standing by Chef Jimmy Rollins Pedro all anxious to bring you the full day of baseball. It's the postseason show on TBS presented by the Lincoln Motor Company. Bunch of coffee going through that crowd tonight <laughs> you know in it. Atlanta. Robbie Ray gets a ball tomorrow for the Arizona Diamondbacks. Here's Cattell Marte. Line drive home run off Clayton Kershaw in the seventh inning. Back to back homers that inning for Marte and Mathis. They got it close. They got it within three. Kinley Jansen's got a little. Clayton Kershaw kick to his delivery too. Comes down with his front foot. A little hiccup in there. Uh huh. Well, he has been good for a long time. I tell you, you're going to see him for more than three outs in this series. From Curacao and was a catcher. He's got a That's fresh a arm, man. That's uh -huh. what he's got. Has been throwing his whole life. I mean, pitching his whole life. What is that? That's different. I don't see that very often. It's like a curveball, didn't it? Now Jansen's been mixing in a slider here lately and taking something off of that. It's not a safe situation, so he can practice. Yes. Try it again. Nope. Nope. Keep shaking. Grandall's adamant, says, I want a high fastball. Wins out. Sets it up. And Jansen hits the spot. And a backhand play by Forsythe. No chance to get the run of Marte. Good play by Logan. But Marte with a base hit. Well, this kid is gaining confidence with every postseason at bat. Grandal would have been would have felt real bad if this line drive had hit Kenley Jansen in the you. foot. <laughs> After shaking him off all uh -huh. that. <laughs> I think he just outlasted him. How do you get a ground ball on a high cutter is beyond me, but he did hit it sharply. Went right by his foot. Look at this. Almost drilled that right foot of Jansen. By the way, those strikeout numbers for Jansen, the 15 and a half Ks per walk, the ratio, the fifth highest single season ratio since 1900. The leader in that category, Joe, is the man in the middle, Dennis Eckersley, who set the record, the strikeout to walk ratio. 1989, remember what you had, Eck? Yeah, I didn't walk that many guys. That's all I know. North of 18, 18.3 18 yeah. strikeouts to walk ratio. And Jansen is on I, the list in the top five. I had heard he'd, he was pretty good. He did a good job. <laughs> These guys punch out guys like it's nobody's business. Oh, so you're saying it would have been higher had you been pitching these days. I get it. <laughs> no. I get it. If I could have punched more guys out, it would have been beautiful. <laughs> Grandall wants that high fastball again. Runner at first and high fastball misses. Daniel Descalso got to get at bat. He got a start in the wild card game. Dennis, did you, did you mind pitching in non save situations? I didn't really want to. Uh -huh. but I mean, there's a bit, there's a difference. I sure. Mean, I, there really is. Not in the playoffs, there isn't. No. Well, this is a win the Dodgers really, in my view, had to have. Yeah, and he needed to get on the mound, if you think about it. Yeah, it's been a while. Runner takes off. Marte will end up at second base. Defensive indifference. No stolen base for Marte. Kershaw stands to be the winner tonight. Six and a third. Gave up four runs, four homers. Four solo home runs. First time up.
pitcher's given up four home runs in a postseason game and had a chance to win. If he wins the game, if Jansen finishes it off, he'll be the only one. Well, he came off shaking his head, too, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. He was like, whoa. He was in, in shock mode. But the only reason why, why it happened is he gave up. You can win is because they're four solos. Four solos. He got the double play right in front of one yes. of them. Got to go back to the 67 Cardinals. Dick Hughes of the Cardinals, the last to give up four homers in a postseason game in the NL. And there is a walk. So Jansen now with two on. This is a much different story. Had the Dodgers not put a couple of runs on the board in the eighth inning. But Jansen tinkering around a little bit, and now two men are on with one away. Jake Lamb finally getting it at bat in this one. A couple guys on will get Jansen's attention. You got to refocus here. You got a guy that can leave the ballpark. Felt like the Diamondbacks, Joe, might have been one batter away from getting Lamb to the plate with a chance to tie the game. You guys were shocked at the time, too, when Jury hit yeah. right at the I'm, time. I'm sure he'll be asked about that after the game. Oh, yeah. But because of the three run lead, mm -hmm. now, Jury bounced into the inning ending double play. It looked like it was set up. If Tori Lovello could have gotten Drury on and brought the tying run to the plate, Lamb was ready to hit. Had a bat in hand. Lamb has not had much luck against Kenley Jansen. Just one for 14. That cutter bites on him. And the 1 0 pitch, Lamb bounces one foul. It's such a late cut. Just like Rivera, Mariano, right? Same yeah. kind of thing. Mm hmm. Fifty four thousand seven oh seven the announced crowd many have left they are quiet sensing this one is in the books one big swing though and it could turn into a game again a little half swing he goes and Lamb in a one two hole now that thing cut so late inside I remember so Rivera. Late. Rivera used to get so many busted bat bats from left handed hitters I mean unbelievable. Looks like it's on the inner third and then it's in on your thumbs. A ball and two strikes on Lamb. Ground ball got jammed. Bellinger flips over to second for the first out and Seeger throws it away. This will bring a run in. Jansen covering but a bad throw from Seeger. An error will allow the Diamondbacks another run on the board. It's nine to five. Two outs in the inning. If Jansen gets there, there might it could possibly be a double play ball. Jansen's got to get over. This is a tough play for a pitcher because you got to bust it to get over there. He's not hustling, and then he's late cover. And I don't think Seeger should have even thrown it. That, that's kind of like the throw that Mathis made on the ball that he blocked and tried to throw Turner out. You're better off just hanging on to it. Yeah. He's trying to hit a moving target that was late getting to the bag. Diamondbacks down to the last out. Top of the order for Jansen now. David Peralta, who is 0 for 3 with a walk. And a shot. Jansen catches it. And the ball game is over, and the Dodgers win game one. It wasn't pretty, but it ends. Nice little glove hand snatch.